Hey everybody and welcome to episode 10 of the Deadly Difficulty full campaign playthrough for Gloomhaven Digital. In this particular episode we get through three different scenarios. We go to Drake's Nest, we have Ancient Cistern and we have Harrow Hive. Also towards the end of this particular playthrough we do unlock a Eclipse character so look out for that. Uh, I will mark it down below in the chapters of when kind of everything happens. So really, really good week. I think we had some uh, some tough scenarios here. I really wanted to just play Ancient System, but I forgot that I needed water breathing. So that's why we went to Drake's Nest to begin with. But yeah, three really good scenarios. So I hope you enjoy them. If you do want to catch up on this series live, then come over to twitch.tv slash Quest. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Sunday, I stream Gloomhaven. On Mondays is when I typically play the Deadly series, although I will be looking to introduce more of the Deadly series over time. So I think we'll be probably stepping up to Wednesdays as well. So if you are interested in watching an episode of this live, come over to the Twitch stream then. All right then, let's get into today's episode of the Deadly playthrough. Okay, today then, on the Deadly playthrough, we are going to Ancient Cistern. My favorite, not scenario to do, but it is a very tough scenario. And it is one that, um, where is it? It should be here, right? Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Where is it? Do we not have ancient system? I'm confused now. Oh, do we need to have water breathing for it? I am indeed recording. Yeah, is it because we don't have water breathing? Have they fixed that bug, finally? Interesting. Okay, then. Well, I guess we go Drake's Nest. Because I would like to do Ancient System, because I think it's a hard mission. You know, and the whole point of this playthrough is to do that. So, all right, we'll try to get to Ancient System. So we'll go do Drake Nest instead, so that we can get this. This is a scenario I've played many times. I I quite like this scenario, actually. Um, so we should, we should be good. Water breathing off through the ruins complete. It must, it's the water breathing thing. It used to be a bug in digital where you didn't have to have it. So they must have fixed that bug, which is good. All right, change of plan. First scenario is Drake Nest. Then we will go and do uh, Ancient System. Now, is there anything that I need to buy? I don't think so. I think we're all pretty good. Uh, we're saving up, I think, here a little bit, aren't we? What small items have we got? Ooh. Got a scroll of power here. That could be a good thing to put on Sunny D. Stun powder might just be a nice thing to give. I mean, stun powder is just value. It's either that or we go for a major healing potion. But to be honest, it feels a bit redundant to put a healing potion on a character that mainly heals. So let's uh, let's just go with stun powder because it's going to be actually kind of useful. Um, all right. I think everything else is pretty good. Right. So Drake Nest. Oh, my. You think I can help you to breathe underwater? How adorable. Hale stares at you with an exasperated look. I mean, who do you think I am? Where would I even begin? Hale turns and begins to pace. You'd need Drake scales, of course. Something to filter the air out of the water. And if you consider the water's separate elemental properties, eh? <laughs> she trails off and disappears in the process. You're used to her behaviors by now. And wait patiently for her to return. It takes an hour. A whole hour. Okay, yes, you have intrigued me. I accept your proposal. Bring me some Drake scales and I'll see what I can do. I know of a Drake nest on the northern border of the Dagger Forest. I'll draw you a map. Off we go. Am I aiming for three Merc retirements at once? Um, not particularly. If we get a side scenario come up, I think it would be a good idea to do one just to try and get the Mind Thief retired. The thing is that the Mind Thief is so useful for my party right now. 
giving her up is going to make the game a lot harder. So I would like to maybe get through a couple of hard missions first. Then we have a bit of breathing room, maybe. But she is so good that losing her when we're just about to take on like Ancient Sister, potentially. I don't know. Like with the movement and the stuns and everything that she does, it's going to be really hard to give her up. Kira, thank you so much for the resub. Four month streak. I really appreciate it. Support me. Welcome back. The quest continues, my friend. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. Welcome back. Sometimes Green Haven makes you want to end your own existence. You just lost a scenario because you accidentally burnt the only loot action card of all party members and you needed it to loot a loot chest. Yeah. They've, uh, they've changed that though, right? In some of them, I believe, now, so that you don't actually have that problem anymore. They changed it so that you could use the bottom of an action on some scenarios. I think that's something that they've talked about before. Maybe not on all of them, but on some scenarios. Right, let's do a vote. Which option are we going to go for this one, chat? I'll let you choose. You probably wouldn't have normally noticed it, but sometimes nature calls and you need to head off the beaten path to get some privacy. Hidden in the bushes, you come across the smoking wreckage of some crude machine. It looks to have broken down at some point and was left here to rust and decay. Most of it is scrap, but thanks to your time with the Tinkerer, you know a good power core when you see one. It's a bit heavier than you'd hoped, but it should fetch a good price in Gloomhaven. Do we take the core with us or leave the core alone? You don't want anything weighing us down in battle. If the tabletop would tell you to literally wait an hour, it would not make the game much longer. <laughs> an actual troll. Haven't watched the stream live since the full game release week, I don't think. Well, welcome back, buddy. Good to have you back. I hope you're doing well been playing a lot of gloomhaven you're excused if that's what you've been doing that's fine you're allowed to do that option one take the core with us gain three minus one attack modifiers 10 collective gold i think that's a good trade-off 10 collective gold is not bad and we can uh we can get strength and we can we can definitely get rid of this so good choice chat i think we can this is not a scenario that should be too difficult for us either so um none for you and let's split it equally between these two only one mercenary oh huh so the idea it is i thought it was uh all of us gain it it is the one carrying the core the maps oh, that makes great, sense but it does get you to the mouth of a cave and there is a distinct hissing emanating i'll make it take it in turns throw it between us, you know. You to gather as many skills or as one each. Carry, so it's time to get slaughtering. I guess one each would be really not impactful at all. At least with three on one character, you're going to feel that a little bit. Sunny D's job is to attack things with an advantage anyway, so she'll be fine. Right, be the first to kill a monster during the scenario. Uh, we can try this. Should be possible, right, with euthanize. So that should, should be easily possible. Loot no gold piles or chests. Um, we're not going to get the chest. Definitely. This is not... Uh, this difficulty, I always pass the chest up on this scenario. No way am I bothering going for that, so... This is just so simple to do. Is there a way to check your perk points here? Yes. All right, let's try... Do we actually care, though? Hang on. There's some good... There's some fairly good ones. We've still got some good perks left to go. Let's do this, because I do want gold. One of, the, one of the best reasons for playing on increased difficulty is because the amount of gold you get is more. So, like, not getting any loot feels really bad for two perk points on Deadly, because it's like, well, I get so much gold every single loot pile that I pick up. That is very easy to do on this character. Okay, is there any difference in cards? I don't think there is really on this one, to be honest. I think, to be honest, this scenario is very, very simple for us, really. It's just a straightforward kill as much stuff as possible. The first room is 
elite fire demons, I believe. Maybe one regular, one elite. There's definitely two. That can be quite hard to deal with. Do I have a card that deals with that? Hmm. Cranium Overload might be a quite a good card to bring in here, actually, thinking about it. Because it's just a kill, right? And this is all about just killing. So, free kill might be okay. But then also Hostile Takeover is good against the Drakes. No, I'll, I'll leave it. I'll leave it. I think we'll be okay. I don't think we need to worry too much about it. Do I know how many hours I have played Gloomhaven Digital? Yes, I know exactly how many hours I've played Gloomhaven Digital. Because Steam tracks your playtime. Um, so... Do I have the... I don't think I have a button set up for this at the moment. There you go. 1,558.9 hours. And then, if you add on my tabletop time, I've probably played the tabletop version for... 300 hours? Maybe? Are these regulars or elites? Two elites? Dang it. Well, I guess you're getting wounded. Yeah, they have got Retaliate 5. That is Retaliate 5. I mean, I can do this. That's kind of... I mean, poisoning them's pretty good. What's the range on it? Four. Do I have anything that's more than four? Range? <laughs> Don't think so. Do I have a range five attack? Oh, Empathetic Assault, right? Um... Hmm. Just 1.5 Ks. More than any game that you've played combined. Well, it's not as much as my Dota playing time. You want to see my Dota playing time? I haven't... I don't play as much as I used to. I used to play Dota religiously. Um, and now I just play like... Maybe a couple of times on the weekend. You want to see my Dota play time? This will make you scared. And sick. Ugh. Not even. Like, not even. We don't talk about that game anymore. And I'm not even good at it. That's the that's the bad thing about it. I'm terrible. I'm as bad as good as it was like after the first 10 hours of playing. It's a complete waste of time. <laughs> okay. I want to get the mind's weakness going. And I think I just want to... Maybe if I create dark and then I shared nightmare them. Or I use dark to cons to do a dark frenzy. That would be good. Okay. Sure. We'll go for a late scales of justice. Potentially. Forty nine. <clears throat> Dose is streaming out? No way. Jake, actually, your League of Legends is more. Yeah, everybody's got that one game. You're about 1.2k on Town of Salem. Interesting. I don't know much about that game. The trap damage after a push or pull uh, indicated in an attack action. Okay, does retaliate still happen when in range if it dies from a trap? So, no. Um, 
JC. Um, the best video of mine to watch for that, if you wanted to watch a video of mine about that, is I did a video which is uh, it's called something like five small Gloomhaven rules you might not know or something. I think that's the name of the video. What was the video called? Basic, basically, retaliate is the last thing that triggers, as well as any negative condition that you would affect the enemy with. So, like, basically, if the enemy is alive and retaliate is within range, it would do retaliate, as well as it would gain poison, wound, curse, muddle, anything else that you may have added to that effect too. Ah, here you go. Found it. This is the, this is the video. It's all about order of combat, basically. So there's a little section in there where I talk about um, calculating attack values. That's like the one, basically. Where it's basically like order of attacks. If it says, let's say, retaliate without range, then push one is enough. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, absolutely. Um, right. The question is, can I use the strengthen one attack on it? I don't know if I can. I'm attacking it for three, four, without strengthen. I think I need to use Empathetic Assault and then just attack it with Dark Frenzy. That is going to be the play. I guess I'll just move close and then I can make my own decision. So we won't we won't attack it. We'll just get the mind's weakness ready to go. Could have used the minor mana potion there to actually make ice, which might have been a better idea here because honestly, I just need to hit it as hard as I can. And I'm not going to have much better use of ice in this scenario, I don't think. I just need to make sure that I have um, I have advantage. Ooh, ice would have been good there. Well, I guess maybe we can make ice here. Let's hope, shall we? <clears throat> you guess it might apply to golems, for example, when they're retaliate three, range three card. Even if you push them away, most enemies are either melee, retaliate, or flying and don't care about traps. What's he doing is he's attacking for five target all adjacent enemies. Oh, of course. Of course. After I choose to use the stun powder. Always the way, chat. Get some damage with that wound on. <laughs> Didn't I know Stump Palace true function is a guaranteed kill? Imagine if that was actually an item. 
That'd be an interesting... That would actually be an interesting item if you think about it. How much would you pay? Or how much do you think it would be worth to buy a small item that was a burn, but also a permanent loss? So it had the permanent loss symbol on it. So there's no way you could loop it with three spears. So we'll, we'll throw that out of the window. It can't be looped, all right? How much would you pay for an item that just said you crit on your next attack or draw your crit or something? How much would you pay? Probably a lot. <laughs> like, a, like 60, 70 gold, not over 75. I mean, it could do a lot of work. Like, if you're against a boss, that item would be ridiculously strong against bosses, right? Scoundrel, yeah. Scoundrel to be able to definitely get their uh, backstab. It would have to cost a lot, I think. Think it would add some viability to some weaker classes it'd be an interesting thing because if it takes up a slot or maybe you maybe the, the the nerf to it would be it would have to take up a slot like that's really important like for example if it took up like a chest slot that's a really that's a big thing you're giving up there right you're giving up a, a pretty premium spot to be able to do it if you've got like five small items right you could probably like ah, i can cram that item in somewhere but if you had to give up what bog me chat if you had to give up, if you had to give up your chest item or your head item or a hand item or a double hand item, might feel a bit differently, right? Stop it! <clears throat> you would almost major stamina pot over guaranteed crit. Now, if it was an entire attack action, hmm. I mean, that's got to be too strong, though. Entire attack action is ridiculously strong. I just didn't press it. <laughs> yeah, it definitely broke. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what has gotten into you today, chat? What has gotten into you? I could open the door, but that would be a really bad idea. A little bit spicy. What? What is spicy? I actually feel like I might long rest before I go through this door because this is a big room. Wow. I know we've cleared this up quite nicely, but it's, uh... Knock, knock. It's quite a scary next room. Chat has points to burn. Apparently so. I need to remember to not get any loot on the... On the Sun Keeper. Good evening, Malkavian. How's it going? VJ. 
What if it's the entire attack action that doesn't allow you to use other items and perhaps has a target limit? I think if it's used on the entire attack action, that's probably too strong. Like, if you were to crit... Like that. If you were to crit on the entire attack action... I mean, that, that just will wipe an entire room. That's way too good. It would have to be a single target. Did I choose the other battle goal, not the loot one? Oh, crap. You're right. I did. All right. Moving on. <laughs> it's fine. It could be a burn. It wouldn't... No, it would be, it'd be too... That oh, would be too good. I think it needs to be a single attack action. You can automatically crit. It costs you... It's a double hand item. And that would be, I think, sufficient. Because that would stop people from comboing it with, like... That would stop you from comboing it with, like, a plus damage item, potentially. Like Ancient Drill or something like that. You'd have to make the decision between do you want to run H drill or this? Or actually maybe a maybe a chest item would be better because you get the robes that can give you extra damage for the chest items. Right, I think I'm getting ready to just long rest now, I think. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So, yes. Because I'll, no, I'll go to eight. That's fine. We'll keep the mind's weakness up. This is a fairly short scenario as well, I think. Self-stun. Oh, I like that, though. That's a good idea. But it would stun yourself afterwards. So it would be really, really risky. But as, like, to try and kill the boss, if everyone could kind of protect you, that'd be pretty cool. I like that. Put it. Put a self-stun on it. Yeah, sure. Why not? Yeah. That would, that would make it a lot better. Yes, you could use, like, heavy bassinet. But then... I mean, heavy bassinet is not a real item, so... Sure. Major or major cures, yeah. But then, but then that's the thing, though, right? Then, if you want to do that, though, you have to use an item that's not very good, apart from in that one specific situation, right? Because then you'd be giving up a small item slot, and you'd be giving up a uh, hand item slot or whatever it would be, just so that you can do that one time. Like it, it's. I think that that's pretty. That's a pretty big drawback. How long do I think it would take them to add Jaws classes? <laughs> 17 working hours per Merc. Um, I mean, in theory, not that long, considering that they're pretty simple, I would say, in terms of their mechanics. The, the character who's the most difficult is probably the Demolitionist, because she interacts with obstacles and has her own tokens and things that kind of go along. I'd say she's probably the hardest. I think... The, in fact, I think someone's managed to mod in most of them already. Um, I know that someone was having trouble with the level 9 Void um, Warden card. To try and mod that in. But there are actually mods on the store where people have tried to add them. Hatchet would be super simple. Because Hatchet is just a Doomstalker with a slightly different mechanic. So, basically it's just Doom. But it's a Doom that you have to move around yourself. So... That character can be put in straight away. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> Zykes, thank you so much for the Prime Gaming sub, dude. Three months in a row, the quest continues. Really appreciate it, buddy. Welcome back. 
And Croco as well. Thanks for using your Prime Gaming sub. Your Bezos Bucks. Appreciate it, guys. Or using your free Twitch Prime. You get with your Amazon Prime here. I appreciate it, buddy. Thank you. Thank you both. Free. That's a benefit. <laughs> free. It's a nice benefit, though, right? Hey. It's a good way of supporting streamers and getting next day shipping, so... Yeah, boy. A little bit spicy. Hatchet has a hatchet, throws hatchet, loots hatchet. Inox is simple. Yeah. It's still a very fun class, though. Hmm. Awkwardly, I think this is the card I want to get rid of, but I guess we'll go for Dazzling Charge. Get rid of that. Zoopers, thank you so much for converting your Prime Gaming sub to a tier one sub. That's a, f a free sub to a non-free sub, buddy. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. That's very, very kind of you. I really appreciate it, dude. Got to go prepare a presentation. See you, VJ. Thanks for stopping by, bud. Hatchet was a great class after level 5. I'm actually on the, the teetering point of level 5 with my playthrough right now. So I'm hopeful. I might get a little bit in this week, actually. I might try and convince my girlfriend to play some Jaws with me this week. Right, how am I opening this door? This is a pretty scary room. So you've got, like, I think a couple of... You got like drakes at the back. Yeah. You've got uh, flying drakes. Then you got rending drakes like in this corner here and here. You got traps. I believe there's a trap here and here. And maybe even here. And here. I think there's. I have a feeling like there's only like a few little walkways into this. Um, and then you've got I think some more flame demons over here. So this is like not a bad scenario for trying to hold the door, except the fact you got a couple of flying people. So I could do something like I could go invisible here on the door. I just do a shared nightmare on a couple of things and see what happens. Or I could drop back. Possibly try and coax them through some of these uh, traps. I think every time I played this scenario, I've always had the uh, crack heart before. So this is like the first time without the crack heart. Good luck convincing Ease. To be fair, she does quite enjoy it. She actually does enjoy Gloomhaven. She won't admit it that much, but I think she does. I think I'm going to go for this kind of late and uh, we'll probably cycle it next turn or something. So we'll open the door. See what these guys are doing. All right, they're not moving. That's pretty good for us. I was right about those traps. Only one spitting drink. Oh, so many regular enemies. Oh, we need to get Phantasmal Killer back. In fact, they're all regulars in this room. Baby. Right. Well, what are we gonna what are we gonna focus on attacking then? I guess we'll focus on attacking this. They got range four. They've only got range three. 
I know this is not like the best thing to do here because of the shields, but honestly, I can just kill. Well, maybe it's better to just attack these actually and use these as the kills. Yeah, let's go. Let's go for that instead. Hey, Caltronic as well. Thank you so much for the Prime Gaming sub. The free Bezos bucks. Oh. <laughs> not free Bezos bucks. Thank you so much. Welcome to the Adventure Empire, my friend. Glad to have you here with us. I really appreciate the support, buddy. Thank you so much. All right, let's get that car back, shall we? Something tells me it's going to be quite good in this room. I forgot that was a thing. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a very cool thing, definitely. Definitely from like a streamer's perspective, it's, um, it's an absolute game changer for Twitch. What's the rage of them? Five, one, two, three, four, five. I, I mean, do I want to coax them slightly further forward? But then I can just get the blesses on, right? One, two, three, four. Yeah, I'm not going to get stunned. I think I want to try and get blesses on both of these guys, right? First time that you don't see Scurry in a Mind Thief deck. I'm not running Scurry um, because I'm not. I'm no longer running um, into the night. So for me, I usually find Scurry is like a must-have when you're running into the night. Because it's just really awkward to try and go invisible on doors otherwise. It just, just doesn't really work. Um, so once I get Phantasmal Killer, which gives me a move and go invisible, I don't need to worry about the whole moving onto the door and then having to play the bottom of Into the Night like without a move. So that's usually the point where I, I drop it. So I do use it all the way up to level 9, <laughs> usually. Rooftops are just nice to have. Absolutely. It's I mean I do miss it a little bit because of perverse edge. Because that's the other combo with it. It works really well with perverse edge too, right? If you're just out of range, but because I've enhanced it with that plus one range, I can generally make it work. Um I have to be a bit careful here, right? Am I just going for the quarter eyes on this guy next turn? I think I am, right? Uh, one, two, three. I can't go there or there because this guy is going to stun me. And that would be pretty miserable. So we'll, we'll try and kill this one over here. Got him. You might like top moves and bottom attacks too much yourself. No, I mean, they are, they are great. Because they can just help you. They give you that positioning ability, which is so important. I think every character should, if you've got the access to one, you should probably take it. It depends on the style of character you're playing, like what kind of build you're playing. But I, I do think that if you've got one as a character, it's very hard to turn it down because it just gives you so much flexibility. Even even if you didn't use Scurry to actually like play a bottom of a like a bottom attack like perverse edge or or an action like into the night just having the ability to say like move four on the bottom then move another three is really really good in you know scenarios where you have to move a long distance or get to a door or a treasure chest or whatever it may be you still have good use as just being able to move uh, like a huge amount in a single turn it's not very useful So we euthanize. And what else? Not entirely sure. I guess I just play the bottom stun just in case. Just in case this guy decides to go crazy and on me. Because if he goes on his eight, whatever it is, the move and make trap. Then I, I, he loses the disarm, and then I cannot kill him. That'd be a bit of a problem. All right, Phantasmal Killer is the play. 
I'll probably just keep attacking this. And I'll probably move this way with my... Sunkeeper 2, 1, 2, 3. Yeah, I'll probably stun it. If I need to... Uh, maybe Empowering Command on the Mind Thief. That would be pretty good, actually. That'd be really good. Choo choo. Oh, that was the scam train. Good job, chat. <laughs> Which one's the scary one? This guy's not very scary. Oh man, that was very lucky, actually. Are you doing anything really, really scary? Range four. One, two. I'm getting really lucky with these draws. I might just go invisible. Kill this and go invisible. What have I got to lose? What am I attacking, though, with the Dark Frenzy? Unless I go kill this instead. That's got nine health on it already. Go here. Maybe I just go invisible here. Use the cape. It's just this range three just gives me a bit of an awkward... An awkward turn. Or maybe I'll just sink some damage into this. Yeah, okay, we'll do that. All right, well, those are those two guys down. It's an attack five with poison. Do I really care about that? I don't think I do. I think that's fine. I think I'll probably deal with that. Euthanize this guy. Can't do anything else. That's fine. Um, do I want to get some cards back? Quite likely that I do need to get some cards back. On the unrelated note, is it true that there is an item called Go F Yourself Shoes? <laughs> Let's move like plus infinite amount. There is no item that exists that does that, but I would argue that Rocket Boots pretty much say that. Doesn't technically give you infinite amount of movement. But if you're playing Rocket Boots and you don't have enough movement, I don't really know how you can be helped. <laughs> Thematically different, yeah. I can get three cards. I mean, I, I should really go up there, shouldn't I? I think. Oh, I've used the sun though, right? Ah, it's still two. Okay, so I don't really have a great preventionist key here, except for just on one guy. I feel like I should be able to uh, mobilizing Axiom this down. Well, actually, maybe just practical plans it down. 
Take it for five. I do have those minus ones, right? Oh, I must have drawn some of them already. Hey, it's that Newt Newt. Strength and heal, mine's weakness. I have ice, though. I should probably just frigid apparition then. It's done this guy. That makes more sense. Yeah, that's, this is good. Again? Three rounds in a row, chat. Three rounds in a row. I mean, I'll take it. Um, <laughs> a little bit spicy. Yeah, a little bit spicy. Not too shabby. Just got here and have a question about the tabletop Gleam Haven. Have you thought of play Carol and Void Warden combo to play Strengthened? Voidwalker has a persistent anytime a player removes poison, they get strengthened. Just for that sounds good. Yeah. I mean we've spread the plague. Sure. The thing with the thing is is that you'd have to any time a player removes poison. It would be very nice, but would it be as good as just enhancing strength and on the bottom of a card? That's the the trick. I guess. In theory, sounds really good, though. Mmm, lovely gold. Is that our... That's our first Drake kill. One down, 11 to go. Um, we've already got poison. What do we do? We just kill this guy, I think, right? Again? No, this is unbelievable luck. I feel like this, the Gloomhaven gods have spoken today, chat. What is this? Again? They have not done any other action. None. <laughs> there needs to be an investigation. That is weird. But maybe this is a sign that today is going to be a great day. Today the Gloomhaven gods are smiling on us. Ooh, hello. Hello, Major Stamina Potion. It is. Great day. How many unique attacks do Rending Dregs get? Well, they have eight cards, and I don't think they have two lots of this ability. I think this is maybe maybe one of this. Maybe two of this. I have a look on my um exclamation mark tools. We can check. If we go to my spreadsheet and go to the monsters 
sheet. Rending drakes. Right, rending drakes. Keep at it, MQ. Always enjoying your content. They have one copy of that card? No way. They have one copy of that card. They've drawn the same card five rounds go rounds in a row. And it's a one in eight shot each time. Nice. Bug. <laughs> Bug. <laughs> Thank you so much, Blackbeard, for the Prime Gaming sub, dude. That's very kind of you to say. That's awesome. Thank you so much for the support, buddy, and being here. I do really appreciate it. So thank you so much, dude. It's very kind. Spend your Bezos bucks. That would be a cool mod, like a full look through where you can see the enemy cards. Well, this is like the ongoing debate, right? Should you be able to see the enemy cards? As someone who's played the board game, I feel like I have a bit of an advantage over someone who comes digital for the first time, which is why I created this sheet, because a lot of this information, yeah, yes, you could say that maybe it's better for players to not see it because it's better for players to have that mystery in the game. But if you really want to learn the game well and become really good at the game, I think learning this stuff is important to so becoming good. So I personally feel like it should be in the game, but that's because I'm coming from the angle of I had it in that game. So why don't I have it in this game? But I doesn't necessarily mean that I'm right. I can understand why they've not gone down that, that route with it. That's why it makes a great third-party mod. Yeah, true. If there was some way of... Uh, I mean, I don't really know what the modding capability is, though, in terms of stuff like that. Maybe one of the devs could, if they're here, maybe could chime in. Because most of the mods that I've seen so far have just been like, you know, like YAML changes. So just been changes to like, oh, here's a, an item change or a, 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 a value change or something like that. That feels like it's a UI change. I'm not quite sure how that would work. Yeah, if someone could do it, that'd be awesome. Do I have range three on this? I do. Good. Knew there was a reason for that. Yay. <gasps> They're not doing it for the first time. <laughs> for the first time. <laughs> yeah. Tweedly Dumb, thank you so much for the uh, follow. I appreciate it. Welcome to the quest, my friend. Good to have you here with us. Hope you're doing well. You think the odds are three in a hundred thousand of that particular draw sentence? I'll take that. That's insane. Someone should check your map. <laughs> All right, maybe. I mean, if that is true, that's insane. <laughs> this weekend, you played Sanctuary of Gloom on tabletop and you completed it after you failed it a week ago. You used my strat on opening multiple doors to start and it went much better. Awesome, dude. Yeah, like that definitely feels like a, um, the winning strat there just because of the fact that the imps just don't do anything a lot of the time. That's cool that I work for you, bud. Uh, what do we do here? I feel like I need to just like kind of open this up. So oh, we're probably gonna long rest here, though, aren't we? Yeah, I think we are. Okay, okay maybe not. Maybe we are gonna holy strike it. Maybe it's holy strike time. Yeah, 39. Can't beat me. <laughs> mm. 
Your friends thought it, you were crazy. You just said roll with it. No. <laughs> I imagine the look at their face. Like, um, because it's like counterintuitive, right? Like you've been conditioned as a Gloomhaven player to never open unnecessary doors. And then in one scenario, you're like, hey man, I'm just gonna open all of the doors. And everyone's like, what, you crazy? This, this is the one thing you don't do. You learn that like the first scenario you play, you learn, do not open all of the doors. Just don't. Like you do it that one time. And then after that, you've learned your lesson. You're like, right, I'll never do that again. <laughs> but You crazy. Sometimes running into rooms and backing off is good. Yeah, that is also a, a really good idea. Especially if there's lots of traps. That's generally a good a good situation if like so a room like this that's kind of how i played it to begin with but then they just didn't do anything so i kind of had to force the issue but if they had, if they started to move that was kind of my plan was just to sort of block this because then you only have one hex right you're gonna get if you're in a room with melee enemies and you have three mercenaries and you block all three sort of hexes bordering the door then only one enemy can attack you because only one enemy can occupy the space the very effective strategy against like Living bones, living corpses. It's really good. Not so good against, like, archers, obviously, because they'll just still keep hitting you. But if you're against just, like, a big room full of, uh, even, like, cultists, I mean, they can be scary and they can summon, but they'll still, like, usually get sort of all kind of gummed up and there won't be that many empty spaces. Um. Yeah, this is like an awkward one, right? Because I still have a couple of combos that I really want to play with. I think I have to get rid of Surgeon Satchel. I managed to give away one med pack. That's one more than I usually do. So I'll take it, I guess. Um, I think I'm probably going to go invis, I think, with the cape on this one. Okay. We will sit here. This should get the job done. Ah, there we go. Okay. One, two, three, four. Might be nice to use the boots here just to try to get one attack off and then I can maybe play this, get this trap into play. If I remember rightly, there's mostly, mostly rending drakes in this room and maybe one, maybe two spitting drakes. I think it's like there's more rending drakes than there are spitting drakes. I mean, that generally is the case though in the game. They do generally do that. I'll, I'll use this. I like the option of being able to drop back. All right, what have we got? Range four. Doesn't have line of sight. That's good. Um, is there a really good spot to use my... That's the other thing you got to think. Is there a really good spot to use my... Prevention is key right now. Because um, if there is, then I'll go in this here. Not particularly. Like there, maybe? I mean, it's, it's fine. This guy's going to go one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. He'll go to the door. One, two, three. Uh, okay, yeah. I think I can go here. Get this guy. Ooh, disarm. Even better. I'm just drawing like an absolute god today. Cannot be touched. Got any tips for the first playthrough on Brutal Deadly? Failed first mission twice before barely scraping the third go round. Been playing for two years and you got served your humble pie. Um, mercenaries. So, like when you're playing uh, Brutal or Deadly, the game changes a little bit. The game becomes less of 
I'm playing like a nice dungeon crawl RPG game in which I can, you know, play all the cards that I like and and sort of have, you know, fun turns. <laughs> Two, this is actually a really difficult puzzle and I have to use every thing at my disposal and I have to use the best things that I can get my hands on. So invisibility is already OP, but it becomes really, really important. So Mind Thief, Mind Thief is far and away the best starting character. So have a Mind Thief in your party. Um, invisibility, make sure you use that to open doors. Make sure that you are really planning door openings. Like you know exactly what you're going to do. You're going to go in. Someone's going to go invisible on the door or going to hopefully block a, a lane. Then you know that you've got somebody coming in late or whatever it is. Like you need to sequence your turns really carefully. So make sure you do that. Then for um, like... Stuns become stupidly important. Like, you need to stun things. Like, if you're not killing it, you should have a plan to stun it or avoid it. Like, there's no... Until you get a character like Sun unlocked, there's no starting character that can just sit there and be like, I'm just going to take damage. Like, the, the tanking role doesn't really exist in, in this difficulty until you get somebody really, really good at it. Like, it's... You can take the odd bit of damage here or there, and you obviously inevitably will, but you can't... Um, bank on that like you can't be like oh i'll just get my big tank character to open a door like that's just not going to work they're just going to get destroyed and um yeah it's it's not going to be um not going to be viable so control 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 invisibility um make sure you're donating to the temple as much as possible to get prosperity up um because items are the biggest power spike you can get in the game so the quicker you can get something like a long spear, for example, on the Mind Thief, suddenly you can stun two things in a turn. It just makes everything better, right? So donate as much as you can, plus the blesses. You know, you'll, you'll get a bless at an opportune time occasionally. And that might be the difference between you winning or losing your scenario too. So those are like my general tips. So be prepared to play the game in a very puzzly nature and less so in like a, hey, I'm going to... I'm going to have some great fun here, guys. I'm just going to, like, play this summon and, and do this. It's like, mm, no. <laughs> you know? <laughs> the arches at the back of the hall in room two just wrecked your face. You're pretty sloppy on door opening. So yeah, arches are also, like, really high-value targets. So sometimes you can kind of ignore them in certain um, difficulty levels, or you can wait because their range isn't too bad. When you start on deadly difficulty, that first scenario, you're going to be facing down uh, potentially archers, which are like, what, level four? So those elite, those elite archers, those archers will have like range five or six, which means that they can pretty much get you wherever you are. It's very hard to avoid. So archers become incredibly key targets. They're also the only monsters uh, are they the only monsters i think they are or well, they're pretty close to being there might be like one more but they're pretty much the only monster who never does not attack like every single one of their cards has an attack on it which means that you know every turn that it's not dead or stunned it's attacking whereas you can get lucky with other monsters that are scary but they might just not do anything right so there's a chance of that i think maybe night demons is another one that doesn't does not attack off the top of my head. But yeah, le learn enemy um, attack decks, like using that, using my tool sheet, for example. That's a very good way to improve because then you start to learn, like, what can this enemy do? Is it really going to be that bad for me? And then when you start getting really good, you'll start, you know, remembering cards and you'll be like hang on a minute like i've just noticed like i've been fighting oozes now for three rounds and they haven't split yet and they're like hmm well, i got two split cards so and they haven't drawn their other one that shuffles so you know it's coming up right and then you can start going hmm well, it's likely that it's going to come up very soon so i need to have a plan for dealing with that in some way and stuff like that which will you'll, you'll definitely start to get that with like experience of just playing Do I need to get any cards back? I, mm, 
I think I'm just going to euthanize one and probably syringe the other. So, no. I'm hoping they don't go super early here. They do. I guess I can always go super... I can go really early here. I can use my boots. <clears throat> you have another gaming session later this week and you thought... And you're teed up for the Temple of the Eclipse. You buy comp is Sun, Eclipse, and you play the Nude Singer. Your friend has no idea the fun they are going to be having on this one. Yeah, they will... Uh, I, I hope that you beat that one very, very handily, <laughs> let's say. If you don't... Hmm. Interesting. Um. Okay, yeah. I think this is... This is good, right? Yeah, this is good. There's that six. So, like, a card that doesn't attack, right? Kind of scary, but we kind of get away with it a little bit here. more annoyed about this one to be honest because he's gonna um oh no sorry it was the spinning drake i thought for some reason i thought it was the rending drakes there oh that's fine i didn't actually need to use that it's fine Boy, is this scenario easy when you have uh, kill cards, huh, chat? <laughs> okay. So, it should be... Should be very simple to, um, to get these guys dead now. Should be. Actually, really annoyed that I didn't get this because this will be a great time to loot. A yeah, really good time to loot. I'll probably just get some some loot myself. Okay. I don't really want to get the loot on the Mind Thief, you see. <clears throat> Where can you find a list of all the monster cars? You have Drifthal's Linkja, my tool spreadsheet. Try to collect as much information in there for just, like, things that are useful for playing the game in general. And stuff that's, like, not present in digital like information that you do get in the tabletop version but you don't get in digital um hey welcome to the quest actually peaches thank you so much for the follow welcome in hope you're doing well hope you're having a great day So much loot. I'm starting to get slightly tempted about going into that top room. It's really not worth it for the item that's in there, but... Uh, possibly... Might be kind of fun. It's, a mo it's money. Don't turn down money. Yeah, <laughs> boy. A little bit spicy. 
<laughs> I mean, we could risk the entire scenario on it, though. That's the thing. That is, that is putting the entire scenario into risk. That's a high-risk play right there. Um, I think we're kind of done with this, aren't we? I don't think we're going to get to do it. I should really get rid of Bloody Saw. It's unfortunate that that's in my hand. Because now I don't have the Warhammer play if I do get rid of that. But I need the big moves. Do No Harm is just going to kill something at the end. Make it easy for us. Syringe is the, the euthanized kind of combo. I mean, Prevention's Key does also do that. Let's get rid of Syringe. I think we'll, I think we'll be okay. I should probably have used my... Um, my stamina potions here by now. I just haven't needed to. It's been really comfortable. Really, really comfortable. Didn't notice there were multiple pages on the spreadsheet. Oh yeah, there's a lot of pages. There's a lot of pages on Guildmaster as well towards the back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we go down to six. I feel like I've miscounted here at some point, but I mean, I, I guess I don't really want that up. <laughs> Not really the the one that you want up. You want to kind of play it for the invis, so we'll leave that. Hmm, I really just want to get the gold, but that's quite greedy. I have to be a little bit careful about my stamina here, because I've got two full rooms I've got to deal with. I've been kind of going along quite nicely, but I haven't been... You know, managing my cards amazingly well, but I've been doing it pretty quick. Hmm... I'll just go there with Do No Harm and get this loot on the door. With Long Resting here, I can go... Something like that. That works for me. I just don't want to leave all this loot behind, you know? It's just so tasty. So good. One of the top mods is a complete class rebalance for nearly every class. Is that... I haven't seen that, actually. Who's, um... I'd be interested to know who made that. Who was involved in making it that. Might need to get that back for a bit of move. But I think we can do our, um... Our big move first. I suppose next turn I could open the door, run back, or run in. Let's just move four. Now I could short rest, get it back. Oh, sorry. Minor mana potion, get it back. Uh, get practical plans, and we can move up to five again. That's good. Um, Shared Nightmare. It is a move five. But we don't usually end up playing that for much other than its uh, actual initiative, so. Okay, like this. Get quite close. Play these two. 
Again, I'm just being cautious here. I think I want to open the door with practical plans. And kind of run back. Sounds like a good idea to me. So one, two, three. Move five, move five. I think that's all good. Oh, man. Would have been nice to have been used this, I guess, but... We'll probably be getting cards back here with this anyway. Just try and get them a little bit closer because I, I do feel like I'm stretched here a little bit now. Gotta be, gotta be careful. That is the problem with, what is it, booster shot? Is it booster shot we've given her? Research the cure. Is you do burn a card early and uh, that can come back to, to bite you. I probably used it a bit too soon because we didn't end up actually needing it. This is the first round I think I've needed it. The scenario puts the ultimate fear into you. Wow, it's being very nice to me at the moment, I have to say. For whatever reason, the Gloomhaven gods are smiling on me today. Um, so we know we're going to prevention is key here, or maybe here, actually. Come on, ice. No ice. So next turn we can Dark Frenzy Perverse Edge, I think. Probably the play. Yeah, so I'll actually go and preventionist key this guy at the back. I think that makes more sense. Now we can just concentrate on killing these, which I like. Um, do as much damage as we can. Yeah, that's a nice turn. That's a really nice turn. Do this. Oh, did I not select the dark? I thought I did. Whoops, didn't even need it. <laughs> I mean, I did kind of need it if I wanted to try and kill, but... I guess that's fine, right? I guess it's <laughs> maybe, Professor, maybe. Oh, so many good good loot one spot here. Right. So only one more after this one. And I think there's like three in this room, so that should be pretty achievable. Oh, I forgot to use my um Damn it, I did forget to use my, my potion, didn't I? Little bit awkward now. Little bit awkward. Because I don't have the boots. Well, I guess let's hope that this is good enough. I didn't plan that very well. Yeah, can't get in there. I think I'm just going to go up to the top, though, to be honest. Get towards the door. Probably use Phantasmal Killer or something to go invis on the door. Once we go invisible on the door, we can just let the, uh, the Spinning Drake come through. If there's one in that way, he'll fly through us to try and get an attack off. That's the plan, at least. 
doing a little AOE, isn't he, here? Get our heal five now. It's gonna move back one one hex. Really, times two on the one guy. That's not very nice. I mean, we know that this is probably what we're going to do. <laughs> I just need to make sure that I time it pretty well. Four, five, so we get on the four. That's fine. Yeah. So we'll just go invis here. Don't have to do anything else, really. Just go super early. Them not moving is a little bit annoying. Just a little bit annoying. Um, let's use our moon earring here. So I use the moon earring, I can get my boots back. Which means that I can open the door and, and get out of there. And if there's a spitting drake in here, which there is. Three, there you go. I can get the win this turn. Should be able to now. Oh, sorry. Not this turn. I've got to kill this one. So not quite. Took it for granted that this one was already dead. It is not dead. Back hamstring. There we go. Nice. Right. Should be good now. Should be very good. Just down to you, son. Just in case we miss. Do I have a loot? Oh, I don't. I burned my loot, right? I actually burned that bloody sword. I should have kept it, maybe. So that's six and six. Don't think it really matters. Very nicely done. Very happy with that. It's nice, nicely, nice and cleanly done. We did have to speed up a little bit at the end there because I was a bit worried. Ultimately, though, it didn't didn't really um, matter too much. What? I don't have line of sight. What? Why highlight them then? All right, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm just trying to get the sneaky two XP at the end there.
Nice, chat. Nice and clean. The of red scaled lizards seem unending, but you've harvested a significant number of corpses and make a calculated retreat. At the mouth of the cave, you break into a full sprint, and the drakes don't seem too interested in pursuing you. You begin the strenuous task of lugging the hides back to the crooked bone. I knew, knew. Ah. This is hard to do unless we euthanize something on the first, like, the second turn or something. Nice. nice. Let's get that perk point, though. Could have stepped on a gold pile with a sword. I was immobilized, unfortunately. Do no harm. Does a little bit of harm. To us. It would be nice actually to get the cure potion for him. Hale silently takes the bloody mass of scales from you when you arrive, and then disappears for a good two hours. When she returns, she holds out a handful of small blue orbs. Okay, so all you need to do is lodge one of these into your throat when you go underwater, and it should filter your inhaling and exhaling into the water. Lovely. Really Can't wait to do that. Painful. And you'll have a beast of a time <laughs> getting them back out when you get on dry land. I don't envy you at all, but it should get the job done. Oh, the things we do to save Gloomhaven, hey chat. The, the things we do. I'm very happy with the result, actually. Thanks for providing the interesting challenge. Now get out of my house. Ancient cistern. Do we level up on anybody? Oh, we came quite close. Um, right, let's do a few donations while we remember. It's got to be an enhancement or something that I'm working forward towards here, right? What have we got? I mean, we've we've enhanced. Our character's quite a bit already, I would say. We've got one enhancement point. Ooh, baby. Is this... This is the top level, right? This is top level. Unless there's another way to make euthanize even easier. Is there another way to make euthanize even easier? I don't think there really is, is there? No. Right, this is... I think this is the play. 130 gold, though. But that's... That's huge if you get that. Really, really good. I'm not seeing anything else that I really, really... I'm loving here, you know? I guess hold back the pain, maybe? As a nice little heal. Like, it's pretty cheap. Maybe in the meantime? Because I, I burn this pretty quickly. So... Muddle? <laughs> I mean, this would be kind of nice, too. The thing is with this, is that this means that it won't go after a single turn. Maybe. <laughs> so, hey, everyone, sell your items. I have a plan. If only. If only. Just a hundred more. Yeah, it's only a hundred more. I'm thinking that this would be also an okay one. All right, let's not spend any let's not spend anything now. I think we know we want to save up for something big there. What about Sunny D though? What has she got going for her? Tactical orders already done. Scales of justice is already done. Man.
Wound on Holy Strike. Ooh. Two gold away. Do we have anything we can sell? Oh, we do. I love the way that we just got Helix Ring just chilling here. I got so much wound in this party. Uh oh. I I honestly did not know that was gonna happen. Um Quit the game. Okay, so future MQ here. I'm gonna pause the video and stop mid episode, which is a bit weird. I really screwed up and accidentally retired Sunny D in this playthrough. It was really funny at the time. Chat was helping me try and figure out if we can roll back my save. Everyone was, yeah, really enjoying seeing me accidentally retire a character. It was pretty brutal. Unfortunately, I didn't find a way to recover the save during the stream. I didn't want to spend the whole stream trying to figure that out. Um... So we gave it a bit of a go and I've trimmed all of that out here because it's it's not gameplay footage. So I've trimmed all of that out to go to basically the start when we get a new character. But I decided to just basically make another copy of Sunny D and start again with her. We did lose out on some good enhancements, some good items and progress that we had made with her. But we do push the prosperity level up. We did unlock the Circles character, although I don't consider her to be very good at this particular difficulty level. We did get that character unlocked. So there's... There's some benefits to it, but I, <laughs> yeah, um, feel pretty dumb about doing that. And unlike in tabletop, if you make a mistake like that, you could just go, I didn't mean to do it and take it back. Uh, the game remembers. So I'm pretty sure there is a way that I could have rolled this save back if I took the time and energy to do so. But I just didn't have that and I wanted to carry on with the stream and just rolled with it in the end. So that is why you're going to notice that from now on, Sunny D has a slightly different name and is also a slightly lower level. So, yeah. Back to the playthrough. I cannot believe it. Right, well, we better get some gold then. <laughs> One of those days. We were doing so well. Oh, I'm so annoyed. Um, Okay. All right. Side mission. Retire the mine thief. We've got a we've got a route. We've got a route to doing it. All right, let's just let's go go do ancient cistern and get it done. Now maybe we can retire the Mind Thief and I won't feel so bad. Yeah, if we get Ancient System done, retire Mind Thief by doing Harrow a Hive, then we're kind of, we're done then. I feel like then we're in a good place. We'll have Sun sort of, we'll be level four. We'll have a new, we'll have Eclipse coming in at like level four too. It won't feel quite so bad. Right, so... Do I need to do anything more? I don't think so. Let's just go into it. Go back to my save file. The water grows dark, black as a cloudy night. Don't have that loot island mission. I do. You I could do that. Hands paddling in front of your face, but you press on. Before too long, you spot a light in the distance. It takes all the effort you have left. But eventually the light grows bigger and you emerge from a pool of fetid water. Grateful that you can breathe freely once again. Delete and remake. The relief, however, is short-lived. I'd lose the money though, right? The room is swarming with menacing green masses of ooze and undead. You flop out onto dry land and try to catch your breath, readying your weapons for another battle. Like that, that only works if you're playing with persistent enhancements, which I'm not doing. Only need to do Harrow Hive. Yeah, we've only got one uh, one more side scenario, right? All right, well. Life gives you lemons, you make lemonade, right, chat? I guess we do it again. Right, 
Right, this particular scenario is all about um, movement. It's all about movement. We're going to have to play this pretty hard. I might get triage in here. Now, the thing is, my deck's so finely tuned here. Might not be possible. Research the cure is pretty unplayable, I would say. Because this is quite a long scenario. We'll leave it as we are. We'll just have to be really... We'll just have to be really hot on it. Mm -mm. Oh, it would fix the chainmail double buy? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, good point. I could have done that. I, it shouldn't even be possible to do that because you're not allowed to own more than one of the same type of item. So I don't even know why the game allows you to do that. Um, okay. So, Ancient Cistern is an interesting one. So we need to cleanse all the water pumps. There's three water pumps. One per character. So if you're playing four, it's four. Um, they're in this last room and they're down the edges of the scenario. Um, mercenaries adjacent to a water pump may forego the bottom action of mobility card to cleanse the pump. All mercenaries start with three curses. Um, so it's quite difficult because this room is one big room. There's no door here. So this is actually one, two, three rooms. Getting to these guys and then having not dying that round to then be able to go that round is, is really difficult. Especially if you don't have like an item to be able to like either move on the top so you don't have to forego the, the bottom action. So this might have been a good um, good scenario to bring Scurry back in possibly. We'll see because that would have actually have done quite a bit of work there. In terms of like killing enemies, you don't really need to kill enemies but you... Don't really want to get hurt by them too much. So we we'll probably will have to deal with, with enemies. Or at least this room and this room. This room is actually a really hard room too. There's a lot of oozes in it. So playing this cleanly is, um, is actually quite hard. It is not an easy scenario. For what do I have purifying aura? Why don't I have... Oh, I do have Tesco Order, right? Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Purifying Aura... Eh, uh, Purifying Aura might be okay, actually. It might have been a card we might want to have got, got rid of. Uh, Riverswell, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome to the quest. Hope you're doing well. No need for jump on Sun. I mean, I will need jump. Yes, I expect, but... Beggars can't be choosers at this point in time. You have to put up with my terrible, terrible hand. So they're all regulars. So at least I can start trying to put into play my kill. Like my kill kind of um, abilities. So I think we'll lock down this one. We'll probably prevention is key. This guy will probably go up and holy strike this one. That sounds good. Then we've just got actually we'll go to there. So we'll holy strike this. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense. Okay, use this as spin. That's a little bit annoying because I don't think we're going to be be able to stop them from doing that. Um, so they're going to be disarmed. That's going to split to there. Disarm that. Stun that. That is going to go there. So. Realistically, I just want to be kind of slightly away from this guy. Don't really care about poisoning him right now. Let's go here. We're honestly just doing this to make the dark. No other reason.
Oh, actually, I can stop this guy from from splitting here, right? That's good. Oh, that works out. We have to go quite fast in this scenario because otherwise you do just fall behind. It, it looks like easy and you're like, yeah, I can take this room at a nice pace. But actually, you do have to be quite critical in this one because it is um, it's a long scenario. It doesn't look like it, but it really is. Big moves and rocket boots, yeah. Not having any of that kind of stuff will probably come back to hurt us a bit. Um. Yeah, like, I really just had, wish I had that move, you know? Oh, that's good. Corpse is not doing anything is pretty huge here, to be honest. Pretty huge. Gotta get that extra. Oh. Gotta get that extra condition on. Make sure we got a preventionist key for next turn, but we might be okay. Done these guys and booked it past them. I don't blame you for doing that. I think that's pretty reasonable. It's a nice little little boon there. Just do this to be honest. It's not bad. We'd kill this, we'd get this. Yes, we take a big attack from here, which is not ideal. But we get a lot done, don't we? Could potentially come and hit this as well, couldn't I? Yeah, and if I go on 23, I'll actually take the hit here, not there. Might be better. Oh, even better. The, like, Gloomhaven gods are smiling on me a bit today, chat, for sure. I appear to be getting quite lucky with my flips. Although, I'm doing my best attempts to try and screw that up with everything else that I've been doing. But, you know, the game's being nice to me.
cool. I think I got a pretty good turn next turn as well. Dent Knee, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome to the quest. Really appreciate it. Hope you're doing well. Welcome in. They're feeling bad for me. Mm. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, I did nothing wrong the first time. Okay. I mean, that's quite nice. Honestly, Mind Thief's going to need to carry a little bit, so let's get some, uh, let's get some med packs out, shall we? Uh, we are sort of on a rest here, aren't we? Likely going to be long resting before we go into the next room. Heal here, shield. I think we'll just waste a turn. Seems like a good idea to just waste a turn here. We got ourselves some loot. Don't need it on the mine thief, so I won't grab it. Might be a little bit risky doing this, but I need the loot now. Now that I've made that mistake, I think it's worth doing it. Just to loot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Go to nine. So it's quite a long scenario. I think this is worth it. We can have a turn of just playing the med pack potentially. There's a move two. Oh, really, it's it's the oozes in this next room that we need to really be on because if they split it can be really hard to deal with I mean, we've got a pretty good character for dealing with um with oozes though like just getting in there poisoning them all if they split obviously disarm doesn't do anything to it but we're pretty good um let's get rid of curative mixture and let's run in what do we need to get to you probably the purifying aura Okay, let's take it nice. Let's take it nice and slow. Let's open this door up and let's see what we got. The only problem by taking it really slowly is that they do split. We're not in a great position. But if that happens, it happens. Um, I like the idea of moving, creating dark, going invisible, and then potentially just getting Phantasmal Killer back to kill something. Then you guys are actually like going pretty late here. I think I want to move five and potentially just like a, a big hit. And pretty similarly here, we're going to set this up just in case. Let's see how this goes. Um, I will use my boots here just in case. I need to move out of the door. Right, we got a Night Demon Elite. Move four, attack nine, dark plus two attack. And we've got ooze splitting at the back here. Lovely. Just what I like to see. So I could stop them from moving by going here. So then they would just sit there. I think that's probably pretty preferable.
That's a bit kind of annoying though, huh? The Sarasar needs to hide the pain, Harold mod. <laughs> I mean, he kind of, he's got that look though, right? It wouldn't take a lot. You just change, just change his profile picture. <laughs> I'm sure someone could mod that in, right? That seems easy enough. <laughs> Buff Daryl. Oh, did I not play the Immobilize? I thought I did. Oh. I thought I played... Ha oh, I didn't play Hamstring. I thought I played Hamstring. That's annoying. That's really annoying, actually. Mm. I might restart the round. I meant to play Hamstring. It's quite important that I maximize a turn like that. In my rush to go as late as possible. Um, cool. You've seen an ad being posted in a local subreddit where Harold has used to advertise a food supplement. It's not the best, uh, the best advertisement for that, right? Poor Sunny Double D. Stop calling a Sunny Double D. <laughs> Either they're marketing like memes or they're very out of I think they're probably just trying to be cool. I think you just, you basically just described it like, described brand Twitter, right? Where they try and be cool and they're like, oh, all the kids like the memes, we'll make a meme. And they don't really quite understand it, but they just post it. It looks like a print ad. Like they printed it. That sounds more accidental. That, that sounds more like they probably went on a clip art website or whatever. They went on a stock photo website and got it. I bet that's what happened. Bet you anything that's what's happened. Now you really, really can't do anything. Right, oozes are now very scary. Now we've got four to deal with. Gotta get that loot. You know how it is. We got a lot of loot to make up. <laughs> we got a lot of loot to make up. 
Oh dear. Um. Yes. Next turn, we perverse edge and just phantasmal killer this. Seems okay. Yeah, not having upgraded defensive stance and other stuff. It's dead in a turn. Ended up being the same. Ended up being the same, unfortunately. Actually going to use the medical pack as a default attack too. <laughs> it's actually going to happen right now. Hey, oozes. Yeah, oozes are just the worst. I mean, like I said, if we hadn't screwed up there, we might actually be okay. Wow, that was with advance. That was I had to use the advantage there to stop that. That blows. I really thought that the advantage would have given me it. Hmm. Okay. Wow, well, that's gonna make things interesting next time, right? We need prevention is key back. We need to run in there. Hmm. We would take one hit of three if we do that. With no armor. Like, it would be great to attack this, I think. But maybe that's just a bit too much. Let's let's go back here and let's try and kill... Um, let's try and kill this. We know we're going to have to come back at some point, right? We know we have to go back there at some point. Next turn, we jump in. We deal with this. My thief can deal quite handily with the use elite. So we're actually we're actually pretty good here. We're actually pretty good, I would I think. I can just go for the double heal turn here because I'm not actually needed. So so I like that. We got frigid apparition. I got dark frenzy. That's going to be useful. Yeah, this is a good turn. Mm, they are healing. Healing's a 
How do I feel about healing? I don't mind it too much. Next turn, we Mind's Weakness, Empathetic Assault, or Brain Leech. Really try and get the damage on this guy. Guess the poison's going to stop this heal now anyway. So at least there's that. Now, I have a, I have a very easy euthanize here, so I think I should take it. Packs doing work. Luckily, he can't loot that chest. Oh, it's 12 gold, though. You really, really hate the next room. So scary. It's brutal. And uh, that's why we have to be quite fast with this particular room. Because the next room is hard, and it's it's hard to navigate it. This is a scenario that you could actually do, you know, technically quite quickly. Because there's not too much that really kind of um, stands in your way, right? You can just kind of run through and do it. Like, you don't need to kill anything to win this, win this scenario. Yeah, sure. I think we need to keep the keep keep our uh, health up. Now is a pretty good time to get cards back as well. Give us another one of these. One of these. Nice simple turn. Like you. I think you knew chests couldn't be looted by them. Never had it happen, but definitely made bad dives to get a chest before they could loot it. Yeah. Luckily, um, enemies are not allowed to loot chests. That would be particularly brutal in some scenarios that kind of ask you to, to do that. There's a couple of scenarios, right, that specifically are like, hey, loot this chest. Sunny. Getting no, getting no help. Come on. I seem like I would know the answer to this. When you when can you drop an active summon? We thought it was at any time, but the digital game only allows it when selecting cards. Is that a failed limitation of digital? Hmm? When can you drop an active summon? It was any time it's only allows it on selecting cards. Oh, do you mean like from your active area? Do you mean like so discarding something from your active area? So 
could be nice to do. It's a move five too, actually. That could be quite important. Um, I guess cautious advice doesn't do too much. Yeah. So you should be able to do it. Realistically, you should be able to do it at any time. But digital doesn't always allow you to do that. It, it kind of gives you opportunities to do it. So the opportunities that it gives you is on your turn. Um, like, so during card selection. Uh, so during, yeah, so during card selection on your turn. So physically while you're playing your cards, you can click on these up here. So for example, if I wanted to, I could get rid of, you know, where is it? Like, I can click now, right? Card selection, but also I could click up here whenever. You can also do it um, before you long rest. So it, the game specifically has a pause before the long rest. If you do click on long rest, it's gone. I've, I've done that many a time by accident. But before you long rest, it will give you the option. Like there'll be, you have to click here to long rest. You can actually click any of these up too. You can click them in your card list too. Yes, but I find personally that it's much easier if you just click the icons up there. Yeah, no, I, I actually find it much easier to just use these up here. But yeah, it, it is um, technically at any time. But unfortunately, during like enemy turns, for example, the game doesn't give you the option. But there's, there's not really many times when you want to do that. But it's quite a corner case. Volatile bomb. Not something that we have a really great card to use with. We do have like the bottom of a card, right? I think it's bottom of dazzling. Holy strike. That's an attack five. Man, target three things with an attack five. That's pretty good. Um, okay, so now I just need to get rid of stuff that doesn't move, really. <laughs> stuff that doesn't move me can go away. Here's the most important thing right now. The Sunkeeper is the key the key link here. We've got invisibility on our sword bones. We've also got a move six with jump. So we can go one, two, three, four, five, six. We can actually get to a pump. Depending on the pump locations, if it's like here, here, and here, 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 and here, like I'm hoping that there's two at the front, but I, I have a horrible feeling that it's actually like, oh, we're just going to give you this one here, this one here, and this one here. I think they might be at the back of the room. So like here, here, and here maybe, or here, here, and here. Well, they might give me like four. Actually, there's probably four and I just have to use three, right? So there's probably one here, 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 and here. And I just have to get three of the four. So I don't think I can quite do it yet. But moving up aggressively and going invisible is actually a really good move. Because it, it can block these enemies from moving, buying my other mercenaries a little bit of time. The problem that I have with the Sunkeeper is no jump whatsoever, which means that she really has to be very quick through. Otherwise, we'll just get in ourselves into a fight and we won't be able to do that. I can do two water pumps with one mercenary, which I might be able to do with the Mind Thief. So I should probably keep that in mind. I will say bloody sores probably pretty useless because I'm I'm not going to attempt to kill these guys. You had it two at the back with the three person party. Yeah, two at the back are the default two. Okay, so this one and this one. Gotcha. Good to know.
So I can go in. I can hamstring. I can prevention his key. That will immobilize me, which is a bit of a problem. But if I can end my turn next to something, that's fine. Because then I can just do it, right? Problem I'm going to have is with her. Because she is going to be potentially in a lot of trouble. She does have a couple of move fives, though. So that's something that I can try and play towards. I could also just try and heal a little bit here. I also have a little bit of invis with Phantasmal Killer, so I could, like, secure the door, for example. I think that's a pretty good idea. Then we go late here. Let's see how this pans out. So we hold the door. Following the signs of corruption. Four oh, this is nowhere near as bad as I was expecting. I thought there was going to be way more than this. Has this scenario been nerfed? I swear there used to be like four like regular imps like crazy. They spawn? Ah, that'll be why then. Okay. Gotcha. Well, it would be really cool if the game told me that information before it happened. Just saying. Yeah, that'd be kind of cool. Right. Um, what hexes can I do this on, chat? Is this the hex? Is this the hex? Like, where's the hex? I mean, this is technically adjacent to a water pump, but is this the hex? Adjacent? So is this adjacent? Because this is the hex that the water pump is in? Okay, so this is not a this is not a hex that I can physically move into then. This is a bad hex. Let's hope not. <laughs> I like your thinking, <laughs> Viking. <laughs> I mean I'm holding alt. I'm holding tab. And I'm not seeing... I swear they used to highlight blue. Was it me or did they used to highlight blue? If I undo this, maybe then they'll highlight blue. The last time I played this, I swear they highlighted blue. It looks like that's a viable hex, right? To sit in, but... Am I actually short one? Yes. I'm short to go to here. But here's fine. Like, here's actually pretty good. I can disarm these two. I can sit here. That's not bad. And then I can next turn, I can just disarm it, go invisible. Go late, get rid of it, right? Am I going to have to get the... Um, I might get the actual book up. I get the book up in my tools. Um, so ancient cistern. So technically they are that hex. If you look at the book, right? So we look at the book chat. These are the pumps. So this hex, which is where I want to go, right? I'm going to this hex here, is technically adjacent as per the original rules. So... I guess that means it's fine. I will trust.
think I want him to get close. I mean, it's going to be down to how these things spawn. So we'll see. Okay, so we've got a couple of things we could do here. So I've got Dazzling Charge for the move five with my boots. That'll give me seven. So I can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Get close. Stun this Night Demon Elite, hopefully. Again, we're, we're kind of banking that they don't go super early here. Um, another thing that I can do is instead of doing this, I could actually just go for the, uh, the stun play here, which might be better at this point in time. I could actually just stun these for this round and then i could let mind thief come over here and get to here then the idea being on the next turn we do all three pumps on that turn because then we can potentially um actually we won't be able to do this bottom this last pump we'll be able to do two out of three pumps maybe so you just hold back the pain and honestly, it doesn't really matter what I use. I just want to go early. I'll probably use Surgeon Satchel just so that I can potentially go on zero. Stun these three. Um, potentially go Invis myself. Then next turn, I go late and I just disarm it. Easy. Or just whatever. Close it. Um, I have... I don't have Invis Cape here, but obviously I have Invis with Phantasmal Killer. So ideally here, I want to go really late and I want to just kind of get myself somewhere and then I want to kind of get... Next turn, I'll go Invis and then I'll be able to do it. Like, I, I should easily be able to get the last pump with the Mind Thief. With the cards that I have and the repeatable Invis, should be easy. Doesn't say anything about mercenaries having to survive, so that's good. Okay, that's a problem. I think I have to take those hits. Mm-hmm. I think I have to take those hits. Do I want to go on my turn for any... Do I want to go before them for any particular reason here? I can get cards back. Which are cards to burn. Sure. But then I'm also using the boots. Oh, I have Moon Earring. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Okay. To be honest, stunning them all here is not that great. I'll do it anyway.
We're gonna have to burn a card here, maybe? What was that? An attack of... Seven? I think that's the one we burn to. Yeah, demons are going invis, guys. But it's more of a point now of I just didn't want to... I didn't want to put my... I didn't want to put my Sunkeeper in a bad state there. Because if I go early and go invis, these guys come here and they just completely block this up. And then my Sunkeeper can't go anywhere, right? That's kind of a bit of a problem. But now at least we kind of get here. Which is nice. So at least now we're like in a decent spot for next turn. And I can short rest and just try and go as early as possible and just cleanse this. Next next turn, Mind Thief has to get in there. It's either that or I hamstring to the back and do it that way. <laughs> I, I don't think so. I think I just get this done, right? I'm going in Viz next turn on the Mind Thief and I'm just walking over there slowly. I think we know that's kind of the play here. Okay, so we go as early as possible here. We are just going to be like giving something up. I'll actually short rest here because I want more cards to burn. Um, Actually, that would be really good right now, right? We can just prevention is key and just sit here. We're giving, we're going to give up a bottom action. So, let's give up Surgeon Satchel. Why not? Again, we can go minus 10 if we need to. We short rest here and we go as early as physically possible. I think we just go on 18 and we just kind of hope that that's enough. But if we don't if we don't go invis on the sword bones, that should be okay. All right, we redraw. That's quite important to keep that. Um, so, now we're just looking for a top action that we can actually use and might be useful. I guess just hammer blow. Tactical, actually, tactical order could be great here. One, two, three, four. We could do it this turn. Right, just strength bottom. Tactical order top. One, two, three, four. Get it with the mind thief. The mind thief doesn't have to do anything except have uh, a bottom action they can give up. And they have to go after 18. That's, a, that's risky, though. That's kind of risky. Because if they then go super early, I don't go invis. And uh, that's it, right? I still need to survive the round. So the idea really is that you go invis on the mind thief so that we do it like on a ridiculous, like we go on 75 initiative, right? The turn we want to win. So all of the enemies do their stuff and we just, we're invis, they don't see us. And then we just give up that 75 initiative to just win. So although this would give us technically the win right now, it would actually be fairly risky. Whereas if I just play quite safe here, short rest, get Phantasmal Killer, I just kind of like go in this here. I might be okay. It's uh, it's pretty marginal here, to be honest. I think I need to short rest regardless here, right? Uh, CGM, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome in. 
weird interaction that you learned on the retirement based missions where you are split up. The sacrifice of bottom action works if you are long resting. Yeah, I think um, that's a, definitely a bug. Definitely, definitely a bug. So here's the trick, though. I would have to go on 29, which is not great. But then I could just suck it up with the swarm. I think this is going to work, you know? I actually do think this is kind of going to work. Looking good. Okay, first up, we'll go a bottom action to cleanse the pump. Get out of here, pump. These guys aren't moving. Perfect. Right, Sunkeeper. Do this first before I get too crazy. Easy chat. Easy. Don't know what all the fuss was about. Couple of curses in there now too. Might get lucky with some curse draws here. Nice. Oh, welcome to the quest, Eureka, Eurunica, Eurunia. Hope I said that right. Welcome. Thank you so much for the follow. Hope you're doing well. Return of Sunny D. <laughs> By the time yes. the fight is over, the walls and floor are a mess of black ooze. None of it's pulsating anymore, though, which is a step in the right direction. A simple mop can clean the remnants now that the dark presence has been removed. You approach the back wall and bemusedly wipe away some of the grime with your finger. Most of it comes off easily, but a chalky black streak remains. Curious. You take your sleeve and begin wiping the wall more vigorously, <laughs> Clean water rules. quickly revealing some sort of runic language. With enough cleaning, you find lettering covering the entire back wall. The letters are unrecognizable, but you jot them down and head back to town, bringing the writings to a language expert at the university. Happy with that. Very, very happy with the way that, that ended up going. Worked out really well for us with... Um... Like, just the movement and everything clicked together really, really nicely. And when we needed the enemies to not do a lot, they didn't really do a lot, which was good. We never had a turn where it looked like they were just going to really get us. So that was a little bit risky at the end there to go for the tactical order to then win that turn. Like I said, I could have really played that a lot safer and just gone, like, let's just go in viz, in viz, and then just eventually get it. But, um, yeah, really happy with that. That worked out really, really nicely. Scott Sword, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome, buddy. Hope you're doing well. Welcome in. Welcome to the quest, my friend. Glorified plumbers. Yeah, I mean, we did just basically... In a roundabout way, yeah, we did basically just do Gloomhaven's plumbing, I suppose. Nice. That probably wants to go save a princess in a castle next, right?
you were able to finish that mission with only two cards in the discard, none in hand, and long rest allow you to activate the it's chest. Part of a ritual. Definitely. Says a bespectacled quattro, staring down at your crude writing. I am not myself entirely familiar with the specifics, but it seems to be a ritual to Wellspa, uh, corrupt. I believe such corruption would require the use of a conduit. Ooh. The quattro peers even more intently at the writings. Ah, here. Something referred to as the artifact, housed at the Temple of Elements. The Quattro rushes over to a bookcase, overflowing with texts. Ah, interesting. I've heard of that before. He disappears behind a large stack of tomes. Yes, the Temple of the Elements. His head pops out above the books. The Temple of the Elements, said to house the Vessel of the Elements, a powerful ancient artifact capable of giving shape and power to the elemental residues around us. The book says the temple isn't even that far from here. Somewhere around the fork in the Serpent's Kiss River. If you're looking to get to the bottom of the corruption, I'd start there. Excellent. Not right away, though. Ooh, plus two prosperity. Imagine if we just retire, retire this one as well. Jesus, I'm so upset. I need to keep saving money. Right, leveling up. Leveling up. Sawn Connery. Level 8. So we have Bedside Manor. Heal 3, range 1. Remove all negative conditions on the large, on the heal target and give them one large medical pack. Um, Pretty bad effects to be honest large medical packs are not worth it in my opinion it, they're really not because the power of med packs is not the heal it's just having a card and the lower initiative and the better heal on it is not worth it in my opinion so this is a pretty bad burn effect good initiative here though so if this bottom is usable then this could still be a very usable card and you just use this maybe towards the end of a scenario for xp so move two, one adjacent ally may recover up to two of their discarded cards. This is actually nuts if you can do this reliably with certain characters. We know how powerful like the Mind Thief is. Just being able to constantly play like Perverse Edge, Frigid Apparition back to back all the time. Really, really powerful. And five initiative two is very good. The only problem with this is that, you know, perhaps it's so early that you know you want to actually go late so that the person can play those two cards and then get them back again to play them the next round so sometimes you'll end up going before the character that you want to give the cards back and it's the cards that they're playing that round right so you have to time this well but this is actually a really powerful effect because most of the time this kind of effect usually means that you have to give up a top action or you have to consume an element or you don't move. So it's a bit awkward because you kind of have to get somebody to come towards you for them to do it. And it just becomes a little bit hard. And, and you really need some good planning to do it. So this is just nice because you're going to be moving as you go. And very, very simple to do. So I like I like Bedside Manor at the bottom. I think it's very strong. The top is a complete whiff though for me. So it's a bit rough. Gentleman's Anger though. Now this is a very, very good card. <laughs> Gentleman's Anger, attack 5, disarm, 1 XP. What does this mean? Well, this now means that instead of using Bloody Saw, we can now use Gentleman's Anger instead. And we now just disarm everybody, which means that we're essentially going to jump in. Prevention is key to disarm everybody and poison them. Then on the turn after that, we're going to disarm them everybody and attack them all for 5 using the bottom of um, Hold Back the Pain. And basically just destroy them all now the only problem with this is the initiative does start to get like the later this initiative gets the harder this gets to be good or the riskier it becomes which is why the initiative boots are so important on this character because your initiative boots are really there for just this turn pretty much like this is what you're thinking of you're thinking of this and this like i know that i'm gonna want to go on 15 or 19 here potentially and that's why you have those boots I do think that once you start dropping it to 19, you're getting into scary territory because it doesn't beat bandit guards. It doesn't beat um, some archer draws. doesn't beat um, a lot of demon draws. So that 29 down to 19 is quite risky, um, but still very tempting. 
You're wondering why Bedside Manor didn't ring a bell? Because <laughs> it's... Yeah, not the, the top is bad. The bottom is actually very good, but it's... Against Gentleman's Anger, it's, it's difficult. The bottom is attack 3, range 5. Just a bottom attack for 1 XP. Ranged attack as well, which this character does not have... I mean, we have a little bit at level 1, like we have vaccine and stuff, right? But we don't really have a good ranged attack that we can just use to finish off an enemy. And considering that we're also going to immobile our ourselves fairly regularly and um, cause ourselves issues where we can't move, we're kind of looking for cards that have bottom actions that are useful, that aren't moves. Because we're going to hamstring ourselves. We're not We're not going to be able to move. So... You, you're looking for cards that can can also be useful on those turns when you when you want them, and this uh, this does that. So I I do think you know a five initiative is really difficult to pass up, and it, this if this card was opposite anything else, I think it would probably be a strong contender just because of the fact it's five initiative, and recovering cards is super good. It's better than giving med packs out, that's for sure. I I, I honestly believe that because it's just. Getting a character to be able to loop cards is some of the most broken things you can do in the game. So it's really hard to pass this up. But the Gentleman's Anger is just ridiculously good. You know, you're basically making your own long con here. That's the way to think about it. Long con, Scoundrel's level 9 card. One of the best level 9 cards. Maybe even the best level 9 card. Because it's good in every situation pretty much. Whereas other really good level 9 cards might not always be good in every situation. This allows you to make your own one, so you got to take it. No weapons policy. <laughs> so we'll get rid of Bloody Sword. We can sell the poison on here, and potentially we could we could look to maybe put it onto here. We won't have enough money because this is a level 8 card. It's going to cost us a lot. I think it's like maybe 10 gold per level or something. I'm not exactly sure. I know the scaling was changed um in with the with the new changes so maybe that might be okay but really we're we're we'll be swapping out for this and this we've got a very very tight deck so it's very difficult for us to give anything away we could i guess get rid of curative mixture instead i mean that is that's a consideration don't do this heal anymore we could try without that because this is this is pretty meh really it is the, it's the first card that we usually end up getting rid of. <laughs> it's usually the first card we're going to get rid of. Let's try running them both for a little while and see how that goes. But I, I do ultimately think you probably want to decide one of the two that you want. Okay, rolling cards, maybe. So rolling wound actually becomes quite useful if we're going to be swapping out Bloody Sore. This now gives us that wound effect back a little bit. Especially when we're attacking a lot of stuff. Also, wounds, just another negative effect that we can apply that doesn't disappear after a round. That's the other thing with euthanize, is that it'd be, it's nice to get poison and wound up, right? Because they don't disappear at the end of the enemy's turn. So you can do that. And then if they don't heal, they're still going to be poison and wounded the next turn. Makes euthanize very easy to set up. So the rolling stun is obviously great, though. Um, but we generally tend to either be doing prevention is key to disarm everything because we know that's what we want to do. So Rolling Stun loses value because we are essentially, we know when we want to play our control, we're not fishing for it. So I, I feel like this is probably the better one. The heal self is actually pretty interesting as well, I would say. This character does end up getting in some scrapes. So this isn't a bad choice either. Adding two cards is nice too. Yeah, exactly. And this is two rather than one. So we've got a better chance of hitting this, right? Got a little bit of a better chance. We could always hit them together, though. I suppose that is possible too. Right, let's do it. Let's do a city encounter, and then I think what we'll do is we'll go harrow a hive, because then we can try and retire the mind thief today, and then we'll actually be at a nice kind of level. When the mind thief retires, we're going to need to pick a retirement goal, a quick retirement goal, though, which we'll we'll see, because I don't want to be playing Eclipse for ages. Okay, as the daylight fades, you find yourselves wandering through a half-crowded market street, browsing wares. Hey, over here, you turn the direction of a voice to see a filthy vermin gesturing from a dark alley. Yeah, you grim-looking chaps, I have something you might be interested in. 
The vermin holds out a piece of metal covered in sludge. Found this in the sewer, writing on it. You don't understand, but you know it's valuable. You can have it for 10 gold. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna executive vote no because you guys have lost me so much gold. In the list of, every time I ask you guys to vote, you always go for this, even though we definitely have already done this. So I'm refusing it. I'm making the executive call because I actually do want to get an enhancement on my characters. All right. <laughs> have I memorized any events yet? In terms of what? I mean, I, mem events are probably where my memory is most patchy. Apart from the reoccurring ones. Like, I know the reoccurring ones well. But I, if it's like a, an individual event from like a character retirement, not necessarily. Gentleman's Anger hold back the pain combo is really insane. Sure, the recover two is strong and tactical, but not deadly as well. Exactly. Exactly. And honestly, can you really turn down, like, disarming everything? Because if you think about it, you're probably just giving a character back a card that disarms everything. So why not take the card that does it yourself? And it attacks for five in the process. Pretty strong. <laughs> um, okay. Harrow a Hive. An old favorite. Let's make sure we donate. So Harrow a Hive is the mission that you would usually have for um, Envelope X. So this is an Envelope X mission. So you think you've got what it takes to make it in this work? You think you're skilled enough to live a long, fruitful life and not have your time in this world cut short by some lucky Vermling's blade? You put plus one attack on it? Yeah, that's fine. That that's not cheap, but it is cheaper than putting poison or something on it. An old man with scars crisscrossing his face stares at you with his one good eye. You've never seen him before he sat down in front of you at the sleeping lion, but you confidently answer his question nonetheless. <laughs> well, you've got the stones at least, he laughs. That's something, but it's far from everything. Words come straight from the capital that there's a group of harrowers slaughtering people on the East Road. We don't know why, but we think we've located their hive some way south at the edge of the Watcher Mountains. Trouble is, though, we can't find anyone brave or stupid enough to go in there after them. I'll do it. I'm brave and stupid. What do you say? Are you up for the challenge? You could come back a hero, or you could just get your face sucked off by the bugman. Ooh! Sounds great. Can I explain what Envelope X is without spoiling anything? Yeah. So Envelope X is a Easter egg that was put into... It's kind of like added on top of the game. So it's not required to complete the game. You're not missing out on... You're missing out maybe on some lore by not doing it, but you're not necessarily missing out on major story beats. It's a cryptic puzzle that requires you to not only play elements of the game but to go outside of the game itself in order to find answers for different things it's a bit of a scavenger hunt it's a brain teaser it's it's got multiple levels to it there's things that you unlock slowly over time that are like clues and you have to kind of put all the clues together it's quite it's quite a complicated puzzle it's not like it doesn't not obvious at times you do have to really think about it and essentially there's a reward at the end of it for players to be able to use in their game if they choose which um yeah is like the spoiler part of it really but it was it's always been meant as an easter egg that was put in for players who like those kinds of things and it doesn't really affect the game massively um but it, it is really re it is really cool Thought Harrow Hive was from the secret envelope, not envelope X. I thought the re But I thought the reward was Oh I'm thinking of the reward. The reward for this mission is part of Envelope X, right? It's the it's the reward is a piece of the puzzle, right? 
that's maybe where I'm getting slightly confused. Maybe the mission is not, but uh, um, I'm pretty sure the reward is. Yeah, the, well, the reward's 20 gold in digital, but it's not in physical. It's I believe it is part of the... one. That's a clue. Um, is it for tabletop only? Yeah, it's tabletop only. Uh, I mean, they, they may bring it to digital, but it would be difficult because, like I said, it's... Um, it, it was meant as a very secretive kind of like Easter egg for physical players. Like I, Isaac has always been very close, the designer on um, safeguarding it. You know, he, he, he likes people to figure it out. And there are elements to it that, I mean, I guess you could just go, you could probably still try and solve it if you had all of the pieces, but it, it is awkward and and the way that they've gone about programming digital right now i would say it's probably less likely or maybe they would have to like redo it or something i don't know it's possible they could put the reward in people have asked about that but i also think that that's unlikely because again isaac likes to safeguard that as a reward for players who did it it's basically the biggest spoiler in gloomhaven which is why i don't talk about it very much like what what it entails because it is considered to be the biggest spoiler because it's something that players have to go seek out in order to do it and by spoiling it you're yeah i mean like there's a lot of fun in that so you can go and seek out the um what it is easily you can google it there's plenty of threads on board game geek about what it is and how to solve it but it's um yeah it's, it's considered to be basically like the biggest spoiler Um, all right, I'll let you guys vote on this one. Why not? We haven't had a vote for a while. Which option should we go for, chat, for this event? One or two? Okay, so heading up, heading out a little late, aren't you? The guard of the wall looks at you passively. You grunt in response and head through the open gate. Nobody's going to go looking for your corpse if you don't return. The guard shouts at your back. You end up embarking out on the road much later than you had hoped. Events in town saw to that. But as the dusk settles on the horizon, you feel confident that you are up to any threat you might face. And then begins the howling of wolves, vicious foul beasts. And judging from their sounds, they seem to be getting closer. Do we option one, run from the howling to safety? Or option two, let the wolves come? You found it by pure accident when you finally got a third-party storage solution and tore out the stock tray. I am a little bit like... So when I ever, whenever I get a legacy board game, one of the first things I do is I actually take everything out of the box because, like, legacy games are notorious for hiding something somewhere in the insert. So I always just check everything. <laughs> it's just like, whenever I get it, I'm like, right, there's something hidden in this box. <laughs> Right, option two, let the wolves come. Confident that the wolves pose no significant threat, you stand your ground and prepare for battle. The pack comes ragged and hungry, slowly emerging from the dark and surround your party. There are more of them than you expected, but not enough to take you down. You suffer a bite or two, but are able to fight them off. Start with three damage. I believe that's, that's a good choice, chat. I think the other one was worse, right? Much worse. Not one to back down from a challenge. You make your way to the Watcher Mountains, where the old man said there'd be a harrower hive. You wander through the foothills for hours without finding any sort of evidence of it, and then you begin to hear a faint buzzing. You approach the nearby cliff face and it grows louder. The harrowers are in the rocks, and you're going to have to dig them out. Mm, lovely. Reveal a room tile by opening a door. I believe there are no doors in this scenario. <laughs> um, there's a lot of walls. So I think we'll be doing this one. Uh, loot five or more gold piles during the scenario. Yep, we can do that. Kill a monster during the scenario by causing at least four or more points of damage. Use your equipped items a number of times. Yeah, we'll do this too. We'll, we'll definitely be doing that. Um, okay, is there anything... Is there anything that we need? 
anything to change? I don't think so. This is a this is a hard scenario, but pretty straightforward in terms of cards that you use. You just need to be hitting stuff. Did we swap in Gentleman's Anger? We did. Okay. This one's frustrating with two minis. It's really bad with uh, Summoner as well, yeah? Like any summoning character. It's... Yeah. They... They should really have come up with a rule where you can choose or something. Like, so... Something like walls are always on initiative 99 and are always the last thing focused. Regardless of distance or something. They could have come up with a rule like that, I think. That would have been fine. Your group failed this one the first time and never looked back. <laughs> Just never did it. Nope. Don't need to do that one then. I think we'll go... We'll go right first. We'll go right first. Oh, do I have to get cards? Oh. Right. Okay. Well, that's a bit frustrating. Hmm. Guess those then. Wow, that negative scenario effect's pretty bad, huh? Watch me crit this wall. <laughs> Watch me crit these walls. <laughs> the walls are OP on this one. Walls need to be nerfed. <laughs> Great content, keep up. You really enjoyed the scenario when you did it at the start of your first digital playthrough. Haven't unlocked it in tabletop version. Yeah, you got it quite lucky unlocking it early, Scott Squad. And thanks for a nice comment. Glad you're enjoying the stream, bud. Okay, I guess I want to heal you. And I probably want to heal you. Actually, I'll probably heal myself. Because I can always empathetic assault to heal two here. Do, 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 do. Right, here comes the blast. First, first draw. Right, you win round one, wall. But I'm coming for you. It's kind of annoying, actually, because I really wanted it to open so I was invisible at the right time. Now I'm not going to be invisible at the right time. What am I supposed to do? Um, let's roll in for four and let's just do this. Uh, that's probably not a great idea to do that. Let's do this because then I get some flexibility. All right, knock, knock. Wow. Wow, he really showed, the, he showed that guy who's boss. <laughs> Great job. Yeah, that really showed that wall, my thief. <laughs> Craig would like this mission. He could hit a rock with a rock. Yeah, but then, like, that would be a real big moral dilemma for him, right? I mean, I don't think he would really appreciate that.
You bought Triforce for this one, and AoEs go absolutely fuck wild. I imagine playing uh, Eternal Equilibrium in this one would be quite would be quite good. All right, let's go sit there, shall we? Does guy have jump? No. I like the fact that when you blow up the walls, it stuns everything near it. It adds this really nice mechanic to this scenario, I think. Didn't get very didn't get very lucky with this though. I guess I should have I, I probably should have kept that free actually for this move. I didn't think about that. I should have just gone there, hit this. Yeah, that was really bad. I should have just gone there with that, then I could have jumped there, disarmed everything. Yeah, that wasn't that wasn't good. That was a minor mistake there. I think I can play through it though. I'm not gonna worry about it too much. I'd also potentially kill something. Yeah, that was a quite a big mistake, actually. Oh, well, I'm sure we'll be fine. Um... Boots, right? We do have boots. Yeah! How did I unlock Harrow Hybrid Digital? It was an event that came up um, um, through the city event deck. And I think, uh, do I have the unlock conditions down in my tool sheet? I don't think I do, actually. Um, it might just be a prosperity thing. Maybe it goes in through prosperity. Let me take a look at the sheet. I can't remember, but then I can at least find where it is. Arrow Hive. Yeah, I don't think I have the source of this. That would be a really good thing to add to this, actually. Or at least for the ones that are uh, the main story quests, right? Well, not the main story quests. The ones that are the side quests. Harrow a hive. Harrow a hive. Harrow a hive. There you are. Bravery. It says requirements bravery. Whatever that means. Oh, no item to refresh. Wasted. I really kind of got screwed, didn't I, by that negative effect. Did me in. Mm. That shed nightmare might be quite good here. Might be nice to get some curses in. Or...
Oof. Yikes. Take a, we'll take a, a one hit from this snake, I guess. Or not. <laughs> Does destroying walls turn two rooms into a single room from Ferno-like effects? That's a really good question. I mean... Yes? I mean, they're not technically doors. They're technically obstacles, right? That have health. So, yes? This one makes getting the 200 damage on one Merc achievement pretty easy with the three spears. Yeah. <laughs> Considering that this is going to count everything. Very simple. Right. Do I have like a... I don't have a loot here, do I? I could really do with looting a little bit. That would be great, really, right now. Got loot here, though. Well, this doesn't really work exactly how I want it to right now. I don't think I want to put research the cure in quite yet. Light of the walls could only be destroyed through attack damage, not direct damage by a crack cut. You're not sure if that was correct or not. Well, there's one way to find out. Each wall can be destroyed through damage. Characters can target and attack the walls like any regular enemy, but character summons will not attack walls unless directly controlled by a character. That's an important rule that's not in digital. <laughs> Each wall has character plus level divided by two hit points rounded up each map is considered a each map tile is considered a separate room there you go so inferno does not work um additionally when any wall is destroyed all enemies just begin stun it's interesting because they don't they don't specify here that it is like an enemy, right? So you might be correct with the crack heart thing because the way that the crack heart kind of is worded, it says like each enemy adjacent to the target gains damage, and it, they might not, they might not be considered to be enemies. But I don't know. That's an interesting one. It could. Go, I can see it going either way. I can see it going either way. It, it doesn't say that they are enemies. It says that they can be targeted like an enemy, but doesn't specifically kind of say like, oh yeah, they're, they're an enemy, all right. Ooh, good loots.
Now, I can't remember which is the best wall to attack here. Let's go with this one. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's a trap, like, here somewhere. Like, on this tile or this tile. I think there's a trap. Maybe if we open up one of these, we can get someone to go through a trap. Maybe if I open up this one. Give it a go. You played it with the crack art and digital and direct damage worked on walls, if you remember correctly. Yeah, like digital's... Like the way that digital is coded at times is not correct to the rules. Like they've had to kind of shortcut a few things. So I think it's fine if it does. I don't think it drastically makes a big difference to the scenario, right? There's going to have to be some level at which we just accept that the digital is not going to be exactly because you know, in a rule book, they can write whatever words they want and they the rule magically happens, right? The players just have, you just have to adhere to the rule. But in a video game, they have to code it in and to code something like that in just for one scenario and it's going to take a lot of time because it all these different interactions or whatever. Like, is it really worth it when you might have like one character who, who does it? So I think we're just going to have to accept that certain things are not going to be completely correct. But I tell you, the Oozing Grove one is a bit awkward because, again, they will heal the trees, which they're not supposed to heal the trees. And that could be the same reason as why this is. Because if these walls are basically like the trees, then an enemy could, in theory, heal a wall, which would be weird. I don't think there's any enemies that heal other things in this particular scenario are there be interesting to see if that ever happens because the imps will heal the tree in oozing grove in digital which is not not allowed because the trees are not considered to be an enemy they're considered to be an obstacle with or a, an objective with a certain amount of health that can be targeted with attacks which is why you can't doom it or do anything like that because it's not a enemy it's an obstacle that has health why, which why you'd think Doomstalker would be really good at that scenario, but actually, uh, not so much, because you can't use any Dooms on the trees. Uh, start takeover. I'll probably get rid of his dazzling charge now. Right, who's opening the door? Sorry, wall. <laughs> who's opening the wall? Sure, why not? Um, Ooh, where's the trap? Oh, I was close. I was close. I think it'd be interesting if the enemies could also attack the walls. That'd be kind of neat. Once you open them up, they're like trying to get to you. So if they couldn't focus you, they would actively knock down a wall. 
maybe that would be too strong with the whole stun mechanic because then they would stun themselves. But uh, that'd be pretty neat. Like once you've got one open door, right? So now I can't like cheese this anymore because they'll actually start to just knock things down to try and get to me. <laughs> that would be pretty cool. All right, living bones. Should be a fairly quick euthanize here, I think. Let's get these guys poisoned up. Poisoned and cursed up. so we can stay there. Let's quickly do this. Oh, I might actually kill it. What? Jesus. <laughs> Not even needed. Attack ones. Doing the job. Come on, then. This guy will uh, go into the trap, right? I think so. In a very roundabout way, he got there. <laughs> In a very, very roundabout way, he got there. I think, really, I can start almost moving to the next room. I feel pretty confident here now. That's what I'm going to do, I think. We're strengthened up. Do a nice big attack here. Easy. <laughs> I am going to miss this mind thief. Boy, does it make things easy. It's like a walk in the park. Assassinating things left and right. Alright, what part of the wall should we open up? How about this nice little corner bit here? That seems good. We've got a nice kind of trap here, potentially. Seems like a quite a good idea. 
Um, I mean, I might just hit it now, to be honest. I'm pretty good about it. Mind Thief can easily deal with this guy. It's just so easy. Right. This. Oh, what do we got? Move three, move three, move three, move three. Four. Ooh, they're all gonna group up nicely here, aren't they? Hmm. I think I stay where I am. <clears throat> you had a pretty pain-free time on this last time you did it. I think it's just a scenario that's difficult for certain characters and most average groups should be okay with it. It can be quite a long scenario, to be fair. Like, you've got quite a lot to deal with. Like, I, I this this room really threw me because I just thought I would go through this wall and just be, that would be it. <laughs> but the fact that there's, like, two rooms more, it actually slows you down quite a bit. Um, I guess I'll probably do the bottom of this. So, what do I want to use the top of? Um, like this. Where was this RNG last week? I know, right? I even tried to punt it really hard this week by accidentally re retiring one of my best characters. So, I, I even, like, completely screwed everything up. Maybe the game's just taking pity on me this week. Maybe that's it. Ooh, nice prevention is key in there, huh? Can I get there? One, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. Everything's just lining up today. Hmm. I guess this isn't, though. I could probably short rest here. Good. That's probably what I would have chosen to get rid of, to be honest. Wish Guildmaster mode used more unique room scenario shapes as it isn't limited to the tiles fit into the box like Jaws of the Lion. That would be an interesting idea. Yeah, I, I don't mind that. They kind of just, yeah, they did just kind of randomize a lot of what was already in the game. It's one of the reasons why there is no random dungeon generator in, in digital. Because the devs were like, well, there's no point us adding a random dungeon generator because we've added an entire mode that's a random dungeon generator almost. So they, so they didn't add that option in. But you're right. There's nothing to say that they couldn't use different uh, designs or anything like that, right? Nothing at all. Terrofilcopter, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome, hope you're doing well. Thanks for the recommendation on Jaws the Lion. You read the first scenario. Seems really easy to get into. Going to try with the wife. Awesome. Yeah, my girlfriend really liked it. She struggled a bit with uh, Gloomhaven um, Digital. Mainly because she didn't play the tutorial. That that stream will go down as in infamy. So when campaign was added, my, my girlfriend, she used to play on stream uh, with me occasionally. Or she would like come into the stream occasionally. So we did a I did a special stream, which was teaching her how to play. She didn't play the tutorial. I asked her, to say, like, can you please just play the tutorial and we'll start playing? And she didn't do the tutorial. She just turned up. She was like, I'm going to play the Spellweaver. I'm like, all right. Well, you better know what you're doing. And I think she used Reviving Ether on the first turn. Or the second turn. I'm sure someone in chat will remember. But that, that stream went down in infamy. 
immediately was like, she was like, yeah, but I get all of my cards back. And I'm like, yeah, but you haven't used any cards yet. So, oh. <laughs> yep. Needs to say we lost that scenario. <laughs> Need to get new family members. Right. So when we played Tours of the Lion, the kind of walkthrough process did a really good job. <laughs> First card fire or the second card of fire. I'm pretty sure that that's actually what happens. Okay, comma. I'm pretty sure that's exactly what happened. That's how she understood it. She was like, well, I mean, that, that's like my best card, right? Like, yeah, but you burn all your others first. That's the point. <laughs> I imagine she's not the only person to have done that. So, you know, I'll let her off. Because I'm pretty sure that other people have probably done that. You're on the verge of playing solo. You already have a group for basically what, solo um, Jaws of the Lion. I've been thinking about it more recently because obviously we're, we're playing it together and we both have like fairly busy schedules. Like I stream, she streams. Um, the days that we're not streaming, we're, we're making stuff for our channels or we're making videos for whatever it is that we're doing. So we don't really get a lot of like game time. Which is why it's been very slow going for us, really. <laughs> Other people doing it doesn't make it any less worse that she did it. That's not an excuse. <laughs> Well, I mean, chat found it hilarious. At the time, you guys found it hilarious. Like, it was a thing. I, I was, I've never been so like, just, I was sat there just in shock. I was just embarrassed so much. And like, she, she said to me, she played the tutorial. Like she said to me, yeah, 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 I played the tutorial. Like I got her a key and everything. Like I asked the devs really nice. They were like, oh yeah, we'll get you a key. Like you can play some more. I was like, yeah. And then I was like, okay, let's all sit down. Like you've, you've done your homework, right? She's like, yeah, 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 of course. And then it became immediately obvious that she had not played the camp, like the tutorial at all. Like it just became so obvious. And then like, ha like I, after she did that, I was like, so... Did you play the tutorial? Or she's like, um, like I played, like I played some of it. She's like, I played like some of it. Like, so none of it then. <laughs> uh, I did the, I, I did the important bits. Mm. Very suspicious. Oh, that's kind of bad. Maybe I should have gone invis. I should have gone invis. Clutch. <clears throat> Jaws limiting player hands in the first night helps with that. But it was, to be honest, it was the text. That's the best thing about it. In my opinion, the best thing they did in Jaws was giving you those A cards and there's just a te there's just text and it says exactly what the card does. Exactly what it does. That to me was the best, the best thing. Because once you've done that, you start, you learn the iconography a little bit more. You understand what it really means. And then you can kind of push on from there, really. Oh. 
Oh, yeah. So actually, it's really good. You get a set of A cards and you get a set of B cards of your kind of starting hand. And it tells you, like, play with the A cards, this number, this number, and this number. And it kind of, like, walks you through it. And on the cards itself, it says, like, like you do this. So this allows you to attack an enemy, like, doing this, this, this. It's, it's really good. It's why, in my opinion, it is the best way to learn the game if you've got the money and the inclination. Because although the tutorial and digital is good, it doesn't ha hold your hand as much as that and really like allow you to kind of explore it for yourself. It kind of just walks you through these pre-set situations where it's like, oh, you should loot all of the treasure this turn or you, or you should hit this guy and kill it, you know? Like it doesn't, it just basically tells you, you should play this card, you should play this card. Whereas in, in Jaws, it does that a little bit to the begin with, but then it kind of like, it just gives you an extra card each, each scenario. Like here, add these, this card, add this effect. And like each scenario, it's like, okay, like for example, there's like no looting or something in the first scenario. Then after that, they're like, okay, new rule. Now enemies drop gold whenever they die. And if you finish your turn or you play a loot card, you can pick up. So it explains what looting is. And then from scenario two, you're playing with looting. And then from scenario three, it'll explain something else. And then you'll be playing with that mechanic as well, like traps, for example. And it'll just do it like that. And so basically at the end of five scenarios, you know how to play the game. And, um, for me, it was a little bit frustrating because obviously I know the rules very well. So I was having to sit there and kind of forget rules because I was doing things that I shouldn't have been doing because they weren't actually in the rules yet. Uh, but she found that very, very good, like for learning the game. First scenario, there isn't even enemy ability flips. She always got initiative 50, much easier. Yeah, exactly. And then just so like slowly kind of goes this is how the game is played and you you get it. I think that's a really, really great way of teaching the game. Mm, this Retaliate 4 is interesting, huh? Out of spite, I'm growing my beard again. <laughs> I mean, I would... Yeah, I'd like to say that that's the case, but really, it's just uh, me being lazy. <laughs> me being lazy and forgetting to, to, to trim my beard. Um... I know I just want to go super late here and not do much. So. Yeah, that seems fine. I want to walk in with sun here. All right, beat this, beat this guy down. Right, I think we're actually going to have enough gold for defensive stance. Yes. I think I kind of want to get these two guys, really. Seems like the best thing to do here. Tickled. Uh, 
Um. No. Um. Well, I kind of need to run away, don't I? A little bit here. I don't want to get hurt. I need to try and get some advantage so I can use hammer blow to get advantage against this night demon. That seems like a good play. Goodbye, Harrower. I think this is better here, because I can just kill two things. I can actually just use Phantasmal Killer. Forgot that I... I thought I had the Mind's Weakness up, if I'm honest. I am surprised that I do not. <clears throat> I, I completely forgot Unknown Force, to be honest, that I had it up. But that, I figured it out in the end. It worked out. It worked out pretty nicely. Um. <laughs> nice. Okay. Okay. So I don't actually need this. Um. I think we'll just go towards this, right? Still got a couple more rooms to go. We'll just keep we'll just keep moving. Getting loot, getting ready. Setting ourselves up. May as well soften the wall up there, just in case we don't get it with a single attack next next round. Okay, let's get rid of Brain Leech. And... We have already used the hammer, so we kind of... We've started to kind of lose a little bit of value. To be honest, we could probably sell the hammer now we've got Gentleman's Anger. That kind of fills in that gap, really. It does give us a lot more flexibility, though. Let's get rid of... I mean, Do No Harm's a really good heal, though. Mm. And just a kill. Let's get rid of Research the Cure. We're not using that. We'll knock the we'll knock the door down. Let's see how this goes. Knock the wall. Here comes the snake. Here comes the big snake. Ah! <laughs> 
I quite like just going after this guy, to be honest. I feel like uh, these two can handle this. It's not hard, right? We got perverse edge. Now I can just euthanize this guy. Long rest here. Simples. Ooh, we're going to want to use them boots. Really going to want to use them boots. Nice. Nice big heal. All right, easy deal with the snake now. I think the last room has got, like, arrows in it. Maybe there's two more rooms. Ooh, maybe there's two more rooms. It sounds like the kind of thing Gloomhaven would do. Yeah, there's definitely two more rooms, right? There's going to be, like, a wall there. <laughs> it's not over. There's two more rooms. Yeah. Sneaky. They're so sneaky. Maybe should have just hit a wall there. I'm going to miss this mine thief. I'm not even having to use any potions or anything right now. I might do it. Quite good for busting open a door, isn't it? A door? Wall. I keep saying door. Wall. Is my thief retiring after scenario? Yeah, this is it. This is the last side scenario. We'll take out our anger on this wall. Ah! <laughs> wall! Does Pilfer work on walls? E.g. can you just print money? I bet you in digital it does, but it definitely shouldn't. <laughs> I mean, anything that is digital, yes, it probably does. But that is not the intention. Because you said before with the whole crack card thing, are walls enemies? I don't think they really are. That would be an interesting one to try, actually. Maybe I'll just come back to this scenario at one point make a mind thief because we can get pilfer right because of our prosperity so we'll just maybe we'll just do that try out maybe we'll have to go
What if you're mining gold, though, comrade, right? Thematically, you're not stealing gold from the rocks. You're mining it. Big brain. <laughs> Summons can also just stay and hit walls every round in the scenario. What you've heard, they don't prioritize enemy units. Yes. The, the, the official rule is that summons do not target, cannot target walls unless controlled by a player to target a wall. But unfortunately... That's quite a difficult rule to implement. <laughs> it turns out. What have you got? Like retaliate a billion? What's your retaliate right now? Four? Innate four. So retaliate six. Uh, you're okay. I'll just chill here. That's fine. I'll just keep hitting this wall. It's fine. Soften it up for a... A spicy stun play. Oh, wow. They're just going to beat me by doing this. Summoner is rough here in digital. I, I would say it's unplayable. And I would think Beast Tyrant. If you're playing um, passive Beast Tyrant, like Concentrated Rage Beast Tyrant, I would say uh, pretty much unplayable, right? I mean, what, what can you do? These guys have got a ridiculous amount of retaliate again now, right? I'll take it there because it's not really that bad there. Just walking into their hives and demolishing the walls while they stare at you menacingly. Yeah, they're really not that keen on defending right now, are they? They're in it for the long game, though. They know what they're doing. They're just playing super smart. Maybe I should have gone after there now. Gonna get rid of this poison. Yeah, I probably shouldn't have burnt, do no harm, but I'm feeling pretty good about this scenario, so I'm not going to worry about that too much. Mm-hmm. Um... Hmm. 
The Dark Frenzy is pretty good against the Retaliate, you see. But Corrupting of Race is also very good here. Strengthen's so nice to have. Maybe I'll get rid of this. Um... That's a bit of an awkward turn now, huh? Last room, just treasure. Yes, yeah, it's a, it's it's a twenty gold, I believe. Not really, honestly, not really worth the hassle. <laughs> it's a fun scenario, but it's not really. Yeah, I, I feel like they could have. I don't know what they could have given you without unbalancing the game somewhat, but something else maybe would have been nice. Let me just walk in there, please. Bring it all down. <laughs> what do we think? never actually did this scenario in Tear Salt. We managed to solve X without it. I can't remember. I don't really want to spoil it what's in it, so I won't say, but I'm trying to remember exactly what was in it. I guess that's possible. I thought there were like some symbols in this one though, but maybe you could fill in the blanks without it. I feel like this was one of the... This, for me, was one of the first scenarios that brought X into the game. Because, like, we played for, I don't know, 15 scenarios or something like that. We played for quite a while. Maybe we were on to our second characters at that point. Maybe 20 scenarios. Maybe we were on to our, about a second character. And that was when we felt like we deserved it. So we, we did it then. Ah, uh, yes, this mission. Yeah, a fan favorite. Oh, close. Got lucky with the clues. You didn't need this one. No enemies. Oh no, is it going to die? No! I thought there was an enemy in this room. All of this and I don't get the 20 gold? All right. We <laughs> start around. <laughs> uh uh. uh. <laughs> I'm getting my 20 gold. I put all of that work in. I'm getting that 20 gold. <laughs> they could have made the treasure uh, 
Citronella calendar, small item that protects yeah, against arrow attacks. A little bit spicy. I feel like they could have given you something that gives you poison or something, maybe? The enemy counter on the right shows us. Oh, yeah, I know, but I don't pay attention to this. <laughs> I barely. T Unless the scenario is close, I don't pay attention to this. So I guess I need to run in with. Uh, I mean, I I'd like to get in here, so. That's what I'll do. Plus, they open that way as well. All right, treasure for me. It is kind of weird, though, that you may never have seen the chest. <laughs> How weird's that? You might complete this without ever knowing. I mean, apart from it says it on the front that there's a chest, right? But you might have been like... I mean, you can see that there's walls there, but... Oh, that's going to go some way to recover our mistake earlier. <laughs> Night demons and in physical, one of the requirements is to reveal all rooms. Is a foul it? congregation of harrowers up to no good. Oh, you're right. It is. But I guess the thing is, is that if you revealed the room, and then there's no enemies, like you could still not get the chest right. You'd find the chest, but you might. You might not actually. Um, get it because you might just break it down and then oh i don't have any movement i guess that's possible but yeah you would at least know that it was there i mean you'd know in you'd know in physical anyway right because you'd look at the the board and you'd know because you put the treasure tile down <laughs> that is kind of harsh that that is it i'm guessing it's because they're not functioning as rooms or something I, that's weird i would be interested to try out Inferno on this in digital and see if it works like everything. That'd be interesting. And it would work on the walls as well. That'd be really crazy chaotic. Oh, Mind Thief. Yeah. Yeah, I agree, Metal Dragon. It's like, it's really obvious in the tabletop version. But here it might not be, which is maybe intended, but. When you return to Bloomington to meet up with the old man at the agreed upon location, though, he is nowhere to be found. Asking around at the sleeping lion, no one even seems a to ghost. remember him ever being there. He's a ghost. Trana Wolf, thank you so much for the follow. Really appreciate it. Welcome in. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to the quest. Hope you're having a great day. To be fair, the chest is much more important than physical. It is. Yeah, if you miss that in physical... Well, having said that, though, if you don't really care about Envelope X, which I'm sure a lot of people didn't, I would love to hear the percentages of how many people did it. Because they're doing a whole, like, puzzle thing in Frosthaven too, aren't they? And they've said, like, oh, this is for people who really like that thing. It's not going to be a main part of the game. It's for people who do like it. Like, they can go and do it. So I'd be interested to know, like, how many people actually solved it legitimately. Or how many people were just like, oh, I'll just go online and find out what the answer is. Or just didn't bother or didn't find it. Didn't care. After a few hours of searching, you begin to question whether you dreamed the whole thing. The harrowers were real. That's certain. 
I liked part of the puzzle, but I didn't like all of it. I ended up just looking up the solution. I think we got like most of the way there. And then we, we weren't playing anymore, really. We were, we, we'd finished. So it was like, are we going to keep playing to solve Envelope X by doing different things? And we were just like, I don't know. So we, we ended up just sort of I like looking it up. Perhaps the bastard just didn't want to pay you for the complete. We got most of the way off. there. All that work for nothing. He had better not show his face around here again. Great idea, but bad execution. Yeah, maybe. Like I said, it's one of those things where I, I liked elements of it. I'd like some of the puzzle elements of it were really cool. Especially the stuff that happened outside of the game. Like I don't I can't spoil anything I don't want to say about it. But something happens outside of the game or can happen outside of the game. And we did it, and we just thought that was the coolest thing ever. Um at the time. The blog posts. Yeah, that kind of thing. I should probably leave it there, but yeah, like there was elements of that that I loved, but that were, yeah, I didn't see it all the way through. Okay, so. Mind Thief is finally retiring. Our original Mind Thief, she's been with us for a long time. She has been pretty much carrying the party in a lot of scenarios. You have to say goodbye to her. But um, she's going to be missed. She's going to be missed. She's being replaced by a character who does not stun things pretty much. But does kill things very quickly. So maybe this will be enough. I feel like our party comp is going to be a little bit weaker now obviously because of this. I mean my TV is one of the best characters as both a damage dealer and as a control character. Like she just is one of the best in the game. And she's going to be missed. And we're going to be going all out kind of killing, damaging stuff now. Which is fine. But we're just going to have to make sure that we kill things quickly. And in certain scenarios, we'll probably won't be favored anymore. So we'll have some un more unfavorable scenarios now than we would have before. Because like if a scenario objective is not to kill everything, we're like, oh, we don't really know what to do. <laughs> so it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. So through you, though you did what you could, the air remains thinner than ever. What you have learnt, however, is that there is something on the other side, something watching Gloomhaven, toying with it. Until you know more, there is nothing you can do. So you hastily leave your fellow mercenaries, departing from this city in search of the right knowledge to save it. One thing is for certain, those that live between planes are not finished with Gloomhaven. Damage done, 2,639, 183 enemies killed, three exhaustions, that's it, three exhaustions, 153 healing done, 62% win rate, some of these win rates are like a bit funky I think because we just restarted a few scenarios a few times but abandoned and restarted them, but that's probably pretty accurate, like we, we've, we're probably somewhere around like 70, high 70s at this point in time. <laughs> Goodbye, Sun Lady. Bottomless mimosas by the pool. It's a well-earned retirement. A very well-earned retirement. Right. I will I will turn the sound down slightly so people don't get blown out by this. But we are unlocking Eclipse. Ooh. Nice shout, baby. All right. How are we doing for wealth level? I mean, I could donate a little bit. I guess I should do my city encounter just to see if the prosperity wealth goes up. But it doesn't really matter because they'll just get it. I guess I'll get a bit more gold, maybe. Let's do the city encounter first. cover your ears yeah i mean like i've got luckily because of my my mixing desk i can turn down the game <laughs> when i need to it's like the only time now that i have to turn it down because it's literally just playing a video file on your computer at max volume <laughs> for some strange reason yeah just oh yeah i know yeah is it i don't know if the goal changes though um 
Okay, let's do a vote. I can't remember if the gold changes with that. Mm. Right, which option are we going to go for, chat? Option one or option two? So, you awake in your bed to sensation of someone shaking you. But when you look around, you see no one else in the room. Instead, you see that it's the entire room that's shaking. Your thoughts immediately go to the crystal that you found inside the mountain along the road. You quickly search for your belongings and grab the crystal in your hand. The earthquake immediately stops. Clearly, this thing has some power and you need to deal with it before more damage is done. Do we seek help from the university or throw the crystal into the bay? Oh, throw the crystal into the bay. Just yeet it. Not my problem anymore. <laughs> <laughs> a tsunami? Possibly. Eclipse saved you in Treacherous Divide recently. Went invis into the final room to take out the altar. Nice. Has some good elements for the character like that. Very, very, very combo heavy. Option one. Seek help from the university. Oh, I mean, just don't just throw it. Some of you wanted to throw it. Yes, very interesting. A bookish quatrual says as he rolls the crystal over in his hand. It seems as if this crystal is attuned to a specific location. And once removed, it begins vibrating until mountains and houses start falling down. I'd say you need to return it to its proper home with the proper tools, which I'll need help paying for. I should be able to triangulate that location for you. Minus five collective gold. Um, yeah, that's fine. Crystalline cave, though. New side scenario. Nice. Okay, is there anything that I want to do? Like, I mean, I can donate a little bit, right? But we're not going to get close to donating, so. All right. You know what time it is. It's naming time. I need your creative names for the Night Shroud chat. What have you got? We'll do a poll. What are we naming our Night Shroud? What can it be? Sean Killery. <laughs> Just a team of Sean's. <laughs> Inky McBlinky, Jabba the Hood. <laughs> Garrett. Kind of looks like Pigpen with the cloud around him. Who's Pigpen? Absentee. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> Cocky Rocky. What? <laughs> Taco Bell. <laughs> Larry. <laughs> Pierce Broslin. <laughs> <laughs> Night Rider, happy fun time, sunshine. Wow. Okay. Sug Knight, West Coast rapper. Sug Knight. I don't know. I don't know that. All right. I kind of like Inky McBlinky. Not that I expected much from you guys. Inky McBlinky. Wilbur. Bob, Bob Ross. Sure. Bob Ross. I can only do five options, unfortunately. Boaty, there you go. Boaty McBoatface, of course. No, I think Inky McBlinky is basically Boaty McBoatface. The Shadow. That's a, like, that's a very nice, good one. Uh... Happy fun time, sunshine. I don't even know if that will all fit in the box. Stinky Dan. Twilight. I like Twilight Zone. And. Knight Rider. Knight Rider skips too. Sparkles. <laughs> Alright, sparkles as well. Okay, right. 
That's fu like that's that's it. No, I'm not going to allow additional votes. There we go. Right. There's some options for you, chat. Vote on your favorite. The Dark Knight. That's very clever. <laughs> well, it's close. Between Inky, McBlinky, and Sparkles. <laughs> Night Manager. Night Shift Manager. Inky McBlinky will also work for the Blink Blade. That's true. Does it use Dark much? Blink Blade? I think. I don't think it uses many elements, does it? It's just about the faster and the slow stuff. Is it a tie? It's a tie between Inky McBlinky and Sparkles. I'm going to have to roll a dice for this tie. Okay. Right. Die roll time. So odd will be Inky McBlinky. And evens will be Sparkles. All right. That's 14. That is even. That is Sparkles. Sparkles wins. Whoops. Wrong button. Sparkles wins. You want me to combine them? We can combine them if you want. Inky Muck Sparkles. Do people want that? Do people want Inky Muck Sparkles? Is that actually what people want? All right, I'll run one more poll. And then that'll be, that'll be it. All right. <laughs> no, th this will not tie. If it ties, then I'm going to say it's no. All right. <laughs> you like sparkles, but you're probably going to call him by his proper name, Stinky Daniel. What? Where does that even come from? <laughs> why, why, why Stinky Daniel? I don't even get it. <laughs> I don't even get the reference. How's this going with the vote? Oh, it's a strong... Oh, it's a yes, it's winning. No reference. This is the name his parents gave him. Okay. Well, it looks definitive. Inky Mook Sparkles it is. <laughs> what a diverse group of characters we have. I'm very proud of you guys. Okay. No. Sure, it's a new character. It's a pretty decent character. I I I won't want to do this. I mean, I could do this in a weird way because it's like, like it's easy to do. To just uh, retire them. I guess this is the thing. I want to retire this character pretty quickly. What Dagger Forest quests do we have coming up? Slave pens. Um, it's just a good character to retire into. Pretty decent character. It's your favorite. I, I enjoyed it the first time I played it, but it, it's, it's very one-dimensional. It's good, but it, I think it... For me, it just gets a little bit tiring after a while. Like, it's very strong, and it just kind of gets a bit tiring after a while. Because it's just more of the same thing every scenario. 
Like, it's, I think it's much more exciting to have characters that, like, have lots of different things they can do on turns to, to watch and play with, personally. It's, it, I think everybody should play with it at least once, though, because it's a, it's a very satisfying character. It's just not one that generally is a lot of fun to other people to watch you use. I've always, like, had this thing where playing Eclipse is fun. Watching somebody playing Eclipse is not fun. Right? <laughs> Because I was, when I got it for my uh, my tabletop playthrough for the first time, I loved it. And the two guys I was playing with were just like, oh, so are you going to like help us this turn? I'm like, oh, no, I'm just going to go invisible and then I'm going to kill this thing on the next turn. They're like, okay, great. Like, you just don't participate. It's a, it's a very like solo character. Um, not very good for um, a co-op game. Hopefully you can unlock that sacrifice pit scenario now. Oh yeah, by retiring him. I think we'll do this and if we get tired of it, we can always do something else. I mean, we, we're going to have these, so. Welcome Inky McSparkles. Let's do your level ups. Don't mind me, just over here one shot to get elite again. Exactly. It's that's like more of the same and to be honest you could play the other build like i've tried this other build before and it's kind of okay but it just feels like you're hampering yourself just for the sake of trying to do something more interactive i don't see why you would do that okay we go for prepare for the kill this is an important card because of this this character just really wants to make an element, consume it the next turn. Make the element, consume it. Make it, consume it. Make it, consume it. Any ways that you can just move and make an element is just really powerful with this character, so. Um, this is an interesting one because I've previously gone for Armor of the Night most times. Because again, it makes an element on the bottom. Really simple. And the top is like not a bad attack, really, with the, a bit of a heal there. Um, but this might be one that's... I might consider something different here. Terror Blade at least interacts with the board more. Armor of the Knight does not. And I usually find this to be a very awkward card. Whereas Terror Blade actually interacts with the scenario. Can help us, like, push things into traps. Oh, it's not, not bad. It actually means that we can help out sometimes. And help kill something else, maybe. Um, the initiative isn't too bad either. Uh, I just don't think like the top of this is very good. And the top of this has probably got a bit more play. And it's a move four. Can you enhance that move four? No. Yeah. You found it to be very handy? Yeah, I agree. I think, I think this is like at least something. Like I have gone for armor of the night traditionally. But let's go for terror blade this time. Because we don't have any push with this party. So... I think it's, it's valuable to have a push somewhere. All right, Nightfall and Grim Sustenance. Grim Sustenance is just you know, good value. You're going invisible. You might be able to attack something for a decent amount of damage too. Nightfall, the top is a, it's a massive trap. Massive, massive trap. It's not good at all. The bottom, might you might be interested in that because it's got like an attack on it, but really... This character just kills things most of the time. So you don't really need to worry too much about attacking. So um, this is good because it makes the element on the bottom. It's a loot and you've got an invisible on the top. You basically just want to be killing things, going invisible, killing things, going invisible. So you're taking most cards that have the word invisible on them or kill, basically. Um, right. So that's, that's all we've got right now. So in terms of starting cards. Let's get rid of... So Spirit of the Night is the is the we win card, pretty much. Uh, we can get rid of... Wound. Doom's Breeze, I tend to play with that a little bit because it creates an element. Um, Cloak of Shade, I play with that a little bit. Black Knives, I do not play with. Um... Dancing Shadows is kind of interesting with that move three on the top. Might keep that. Although Wings of the Night is pretty important. Dark Cloud isn't bad either. Hmm. 
Maybe we have to get rid of this. Oh, no. Da we get rid of Dancing Shadows. Get rid of Dancing Shadows. And probably Cloak of Shade then. We only have... Well, I have two late initiatives. I think that's okay. I feel like I'm not playing something that I normally would play here. Like, I feel like I either play Dark Cloud sometimes, or I play Cloak of Shade. There's going to be certain scenarios where this is going to be very good. Where we don't want to kill stuff, we just want to go in Viz and, and do stuff. Shenanigans. But maybe, maybe this should be okay for the first... The first pass. Alright, perks? Who needs perks? We're not going to be drawing anything. <laughs> really? This is a straight get? <laughs> I always feel like this is a weird one as well. Add one, mi minus one, then replace it. It feels so weird. Um... Get the invisible ones in. Just in case somehow that could uh, really affect things. Okay, very nice. Let's go to the shop. We can buy. So this is all just about invisibility and reoccurring stuff. So straight away, we know that our first two items that we're going to want are going to be major and minor stamina potion, pretty much. So that's going to be 28. Uh, plus eight. And then we're going to get the Invis Cape. So we should have, we should still have some gold left over too. And then for a head slot item, we want um, Empowering Talisman to get back to then play it again. And then for hand items, we're looking for wands. I don't think we've got any wands yet. No. Ideally, we're, we're trying to look for the uh, Wand of Darkness or something. That would be great. Could also just get a, a minor mana potion instead of the major stamina potion. Because really, we only care about getting one card back. But I think getting it back twice is probably too powerful. All right, so let's go major. Minor. We're also going to have some synergy now with the, the ring. So the Helix Ring could come back in now. This actually is fairly usable now. And we were going to get... Probably this. This is 43. That's all of our... Yeah, we can't get this quite yet. We will try and get this, though. Um, so instead, let's just get a cloak. We have 21 left. Um, booster striding are actually pretty important on this character because we don't have that much movement to begin with. We have really sucky movement. So. I think that's a pretty good start. Obviously, we want we want quite a lot of gold because there's some enhancements that we really want to get. We want to get plus movement on this, plus movement on this. These are the, generally the ones that I'd go for. So 20 gold, we should be able to get that in a single scenario. So we should be able to get plus move on this quite quickly. And then we'll go for the empowering talisman. And we'll go from there. So we just need gold. Try and get some movement on this. Try and get some movement on this as well, possibly. We'll probably just go all in on smoke step to begin with. So the two moves. And go from there. Why was it five perks on level three? It is to do with the, um, the generation system. So... In the tabletop game, when you retire a character, you get an additional perk for each character that you personally have retired. However, that doesn't um, really work in uh, digital because of the way the saves and everything is set up. So what they do is they do a generation system. So when a character from the oldest generation retires, you get a new perk. So let's say, for example, you have your starting mercenaries. You have three starting mercenaries. 
uh, Crackheart, Brute, and Scoundrel. The Crackheart retires. So that's that first generation. So that gets you an additional perk. So every character after that Crackheart retires now will get an additional perk. Then your Brute retires. Well, you don't get an additional perk because that's not the new current generation. So when the character that the Crackheart is playing who retired unlocks, then you get another one and so on and so forth. So that's how that works. So you kind of just end up getting them. And to be honest, probably because I accidentally retired Sunny earlier... I actually ended up getting an additional perk because of that, because she was the most current generation, I would have thought. Most further, first along. So it's a little bit weird. There is, if you look at my, um, I think, is it like changes? Did I put a, did I put a, I don't know if I actually put a command for that, but I explain it in my differences video between Gloomhaven and Frosthaven, so... Um, let me see if I can find the video for you. Right, this this video here. Uh, that, in that video, I go through, like, all of the changes. And one of the changes in there is is that. It's basically the perk system. The way that the perks work. Awesome. All right. Well, I think that will be enough for today, guys. That was good progress in the end. Even though I made a huge mistake accidentally retiring original Sunny, we're back. I feel like now we're actually, we've reset a little bit. Like our levels come back down again. So now playing on Deadly is going to matter a little bit more as well. That's the thing because our level was so high that the plus difficulty wasn't actually, because this maxes out at seven, right? So when you're playing on increased difficulty, you can kind of max this out and then the game's just getting easier from that point. So now we're going to be at a point where actually the enemies are going to be hard again. So we're going we're gonna to struggle for a little while, but it's going to be worth it. We'll try and get rid of Inky McSparkles pretty quick. We do have a couple of, um, you know, if we wanted to, we have plenty of Dagger Forest style quests to go do. So we, ha we have ways to retire them if we really want to. Okay, so there's this week's episode for you. <sighs> Quite a good one. We did complete three difficult scenarios, but that retirement of Sunny D was really, really annoying for me. I was so annoyed at myself for doing that and yeah i it's it's not the devs fault it's my fault i completely lost sight of it i should have really thought about it a bit more so i've only got myself to blame and i'm pretty sure i could have rolled that safe back if i messed around a little bit more but i didn't really want to like spend the whole stream doing that but at least we've got circles unlocked right and at least we got our prosperity up and uh yeah we, we've got a new party now anyway with the clips so in a way this kind of works quite nicely because now we have two characters that are a similar level in sun and eclipse and we just have our saw now kind of maxing out now at, at max level so the difficulty of the game is still pretty well balanced for us right now we've got the the plus difficulties actually mattering a little bit here and and that works because of course if we had two high characters then that enemy level cap of seven just becomes arbitrary so it is a good idea if you're trying to really challenge yourself to retire characters regularly because then you are going to be bringing that party level down which means that you are actually playing on plus difficulty because if the party level is just sat up there at six and seven then it, it it's not really adding to the difficulty level. Annoyed at myself because we lost some progress and some gold, but ultimately we recovered and yeah, we'll we'll push on with Sunny D as she is now. If you did enjoy the video today, please do consider liking it and subscribing. It helps me out so, so much on growing the channel on YouTube and I really, really appreciate everybody who does. Also come over to twitch.tv slash quest where I stream every Monday, Wednesday and Sunday and Monday is dedicated deadly playthrough day. So come over on Monday if you'd like to watch this live. But I'm also probably going to start playing deadlies on Wednesdays as well for a little bit because uh, I want to make some more progress. I want to try and finish this and play as many scenarios as possible before maybe we end up getting some DLC or maybe we want to do another playthrough with a different party or with a different challenge. So yeah, I do want to just try and get some more progress made. So I'm going to be flexing up the number of uploads. So you're probably going to see more videos like this coming up on the YouTube channel quicker. So hopefully that's good. I know these videos are long. They might be hard to watch more than one in a week. 
but hopefully you guys will enjoy that and uh yeah we'll be making more progress more often and thanks probably only a good thing great so the only thing left for me to say is as always thank you again so so much for watching i will catch you in the next video bye well, I think so. Yeah. Oh, that's the blessing That's the blessing from. Isaac, at this point, can we uh, get your approval to add an additional attack modifier deck <laughs> for allies in the digital version? <laughs>